The main character's name is Mason. He just woke up and found himself on the roof of a multi-story building. His head was pounding as after a long night in a nightclub. Mason was accompanied by a strong smell of rotten meat. He did not immediately understand why he was on the roof and not in his bed. The stench was clearly everywhere, and screams and groans could be heard from below the building. Mason looked down and could not understand why there were so many people there. People were just treading water and making strange noises. It was a bit like a strike, but something was different from usual. Mason took a closer look and realized that it was not a strike and not even people. It was a crowd of rotting zombies. As soon as Mason realized this, he was thrown off the edge of the roof. He was frightened and did not understand what was happening because a second ago he was in the normal world. Mason started to look for his phone and see what was happening on the internet, but his pockets were empty. There was no money, no phone, no keys to the apartment. He had only a pack of peanuts with him. Mason remembered that he had bought it at the store the day before. Mason was in frustrated feelings. He thought that now he would definitely die. Now he would gnaw nuts and immediately to the next world. The girl had never even existed, but already to die. Suddenly a door slammed open a few meters away. It was the incomparable Melanie, who had obviously been surviving in this world for more than a day. Her form was emphasized by tight clothing, tightly fitting to the body. She didn't notice Mason, but he continued watching this fearless girl from around the corner. At first, Mason did not understand how to act, but he could not help but continue to watch her, her graceful, alluring gait. Melanie walked up to the barrel and pierced it with a knife. Water spurted out of her and began to run down her body. Melanie slowly unbuttoned her latex top to let the water wash over her ample breasts. She washed the caked blood and dirt from her long legs and firm buttocks. Mason was watching her, and saliva flowed from his mouth. He had never seen such a sexy girl. Mason could not stay on one leg, and a stone flew out from under the boot. Melanie heard this right away, because survival in this world taught her to be sensitive and ready for battle. Not having time to fasten her clothes, she immediately rushed to Mason. Having reached the corner, she saw Mason lying on the ground, confused, who only had time to greet her, and immediately got a good right side kick in the face. Melanie took out her gun, and leaned it against Mason's forehead, ordering him not to rock the boat, and Mason began to beg her for mercy. He didn't want anything bad. Melanie, without removing the gun from his face, immediately asked who he was and what he was doing here. Mason didn't even think about his life. His gaze was drawn to Melanie's legs, which were both so close and so far away from him. Melanie looked closely at Mason and realized that he was looking at her buttocks and not at her face. For this, Mason again receives a good blow to the face. He began to enrage her, and Melanie is ready to cut him into small pieces and feed him to those rotten zombies that have gathered below. But the powerful, huge zombie behind her just didn't let her finish what she started. She heard his approach and readiness to attack. Melanie managed to jump back in time. It was not a surprise for her, but Mason obviously did not expect to see this, and only managed to think that before his death, he had at least seen enough of the beauty. The thug monster immediately started with defenseless Mason. Mason at first thought that this monster belongs to Melanie and said that even though he stared at her magnificent forms, he shouldn't be killed for it. But Melanie was well aware of the danger facing them and began to shoot. Bullets flew from Melanie's two hands like in a real blockbuster. The skull of this mutant was too thick and the bullets could not penetrate it. However, it hit him in the eye and now he just swings his claws. But if he continues to swing and smash everything around like that, he can attract a crowd of low-level zombies which will definitely lead to disaster he should not be allowed to do this. His upper body is huge, resulting in no support for his lower body, and his right leg appears to have been broken before he was born, and he doesn't move very fast. Melanie analyzed the situation and took out a bandsaw. It had very sharp teeth and was designed specifically for fighting giant zombies. Now the mutant rushed at her, and judging by how big he was, he could simply crush her with one blow. Mason started screaming and asked her to quickly run away from there. But Melanie was clearly not a timid girl and was not going to run away. She rushed to attack the huge mutant. With one swing of the band saw, she cut off his leg. The mutant was not agile, and without one leg, he simply fell to the ground, and Melanie jumped on top and was able to hug his neck with a band saw. One sudden movement, and the zombie's head was already on the ground. Mason was shocked by what he saw, and could never believe that a small, fragile girl could do this to a huge zombie. And Melanie had just taken out his core from the body of a mutant, of a fairly good quality. Melanie got off the zombies and was unhappy with only one thing, that she had just taken a shower and here she was again covered in rotten blood. Melanie drew attention to Mason, who was squatting with his back turned to her. She asked why he was so cowardly and what camp he was from. Mason did not believe that this was a reality. 
He ate nuts and thought that this dream was very realistic, that he would sleep off and wake up in his bed. Melanie came closer and took peanuts from Mason like a small child. Melanie looked at the nuts with bated breath and asked him where he got the valuable longevity nuts from. Mason said that if she also wanted nuts, she could just ask instead of taking everything. Melanie was tired of this frivolous conversation. She put a band saw to Mason's neck and repeated her question. Where did he come from? And where did he find such rare food? The cold touch of the saw and the burning pain that Mason felt when cut made him finally realize that it was all real. He introduced himself and said that peanuts were just a snack that he bought in a regular supermarket. Suddenly, a bullet pierced Melanie's leg. Before they realized it, the pain from the lumbago had just begun to reach Melanie, as a whole hail of bullets rained down on them. They hid behind the wall. Mason was terrified. This had never happened to him in real life. Melanie's leg was bleeding heavily, and he said that Melanie urgently needed medical assistance. Melanie understood that there were more zombies in this area for a reason. People appeared here. A group of bandits, meanwhile, were discussing from the roof of another building that it was a great idea to lure zombies here so that Melanie would kill them, and then they would profit from easily obtained cause. One of the bandits got a little scared seeing how Melanie dealt with the zombies and asked the chief if she would come after them to avenge the bullet in her leg. The boss said that there was cadaveric poison in this pool, and now Melanie's death will not be long in coming. Meanwhile, Melanie's leg began to swell. She realized that it was cadaveric poison. Melanie said that even though her body has evolved and now has immunity, this poison is much more serious than a normal infection, and this time she could die. Realizing this, Melanie began to cry and told Mason that people from the 17th camp shot at them. They need the fruit from the zombies that she got. If they meet them, they will definitely kill them. Mason asked in horror what they should do now. Melanie said that she would be able to delay them so that Mason could escape. But what would happen to Melanie? Melanie said that she has cadaveric poison in her and only penicillin can neutralize it. If Mason does not leave, then very soon Melanie will turn into a zombie and then Mason will certainly not be able to leave. She asked Mason to find her sister and tell her to run because without her guards, the bandits from the 17th camp will catch her and do something terrible to her. And if she runs, she will at least have a chance. Mason said that he might be able to find penicillin and save her, but Melanie said that it was almost impossible because it is one of the rarest things in the world. Melanie threw some smoke bombs and said that she would shoot back, and when the smoke rose, that Mason could escape through the door through which she entered. She gave Mason a note and said that her sister is here, and when he finds her, they definitely need to run. Melanie started to shoot back and ordered Mason to run. Mason rushed to the exit, but he only thought that he could not leave Melanie just like that because she saved his life and he must repay her in the same way. Mason only thought that he wants to return to his world because penicillin is available in any pharmacy. The system immediately worked and a voice in his head asked if he really wanted to return to his world. Mason asked the system if he would be able to return back if he was transferred to his world for a while. The program replied that he could return at any time. Then Mason said that he needed to move to the real world right now. Mason woke up on a hospital bed. The voices of passers-by and motorists were heard from the street. The world was the same, and there was no longer a fetid smell. Mason went out to the corridor of the hospital, where life went on as usual. Mason rushed headlong along the corridor. He ran fast and shouted only one word, penicillin. Meanwhile, Melanie was sitting on the roof. The poison consumed Melanie with honors. She thought only about the rim. She wanted Mason to definitely get to her sister and warn of the danger. The shot stopped and the bandits thought that Melanie was no longer able to fight back. Their boss said it was time to reap the fruits of their labor. Mason was stopped by a nurse and said that you shouldn't run along the corridors. He saw the nurse's tray of pills. Without thinking for a long time, Mason grabbed all the pills under his shirt. After that, he immediately rushed to run, not reacting in any way to the exclamations of the nurse. He again rushed to run. He told the program that he urgently needed to be transferred to another world. Melanie, in a lifeless state, continued to sit motionless on the roof. Suddenly, a finger touched her face. Fortunately, it was Mason. He asked if she was still alive, to which Melanie simply turned to face him. But Melanie did not like it. She hoped that he was already warning her sister, and he returned to her when she was already almost a zombie. Melanie, in a rage, asked why he returned. Mason, warning her negative reaction, immediately took out a vial of penicillin. He said that he had come to save her and took with him a vial of penicillin. Melanie couldn't believe her eyes where he could get it from. Mason asked her to ask less questions. She didn't have to worry. It was real penicillin. It's too early to die. They will get out of here together in their right mind and solid memory. 
After these words, Mason handed her a pill. Melanie swallowed the pill. Although she did not trust Mason, she had no choice. Several minutes passed, and Mason asked her how she felt. Melanie examined her leg. She returned to normal, and there were no signs of infection. Melanie couldn't believe that she had managed to suppress the poison in such a short time that it was penicillin. Just as Melanie put on her shoe, the door to the roof opened. These were the same bandits. Their boss ordered to find a small creature and pick up the monster's core. And if you're lucky, you can have fun if it's still warm. Melanie came around the corner with a band saw and asked if they wanted to have fun with her. She said that she was just going to start looking for them. And they themselves came to her. How is that possible? How could she survive? The bandits obviously decided to quickly run away from there. Mason was waiting for Melanie in the apartment. Terrible sounds of reprisals were heard from above. He thought that she obviously did not need help. On the table, he found a notebook neatly placed in the corner. Mason started leafing through it. It was a personal diary, but who would write such a thing? July 21st, 2080. It's sunny outside. The chubby young woman from the house across the street went out again to hang her clothes. From time to time, she appears on the street. A trifle, but nice. But what a figure she has. July 22nd, partly cloudy. Today, a new manager was transferred to the company, who was seated next to me. She must be training a lot because her butt is just space. Maybe I don't really like the woman from the house across the street. The booty of the new girl just makes you drool. There are rumors of a virus outbreak in a nearby town, but I hope it doesn't reach them. Something happens to the girl. Her body becomes covered with spots. She becomes not herself. The guy sits in horror under the table and watches the reincarnation of his manager. So they began to appear in the real world. Suddenly, gradually, without warning. The company was immediately closed for quarantine. I was even limited by four walls and allowed to go out. On the 24th of July, the virus hit most of the city. The inhabitants were left with a minimum amount of provisions. Calls to the people responsible for my imprisonment went unanswered. If this goes on, I could simply starve to death. On the 25th of July, despite the ban on going out, I broke the lock of the door and decided to find food on my own. However, I was terrified when I went out. The city was destroyed and seemed to be abandoned. When I came to the supermarket, there were real fights for food. People went crazy from vandalism and looting, grabbing everything they could. After I managed to get some food and medicine, I saw the infected biting people. On the 22nd of August, two days ago, the television signal suddenly disappeared, and the presenter on the last recording said that no one would come to the rescue, and we could only help ourselves. I even thought it was a little funny. On the 17th of August, all the food was over, however, I am afraid that if I leave the room, I may be eaten by hordes of infected. The last few days, I fill my stomach with water and miss the manager's juicy ass. Suddenly, I heard the screams of a woman from a neighboring house whom I periodically watched from the window. She was attacked by her own husband and stabbed to death. I just couldn't believe it. My own husband killed my neighbor. He was sitting over her corpse. What was he doing there? He seemed to feel my gaze and began to turn around. Drops of blood dripped from his mouth. I quickly leaned over and hid so that he would not have time to notice me and come after me. On the 19th of August, after four days without food, I was just dying. And when I was already completely desperate, someone knocked on my door. This man was looking for penicillin. He traded a huge pile of food for my penicillin. It really worked better than the most powerful antibiotics. It was hard to believe that antibiotics did not work, but some kind of simple penicillin was the strongest medicine. When I was on the balcony on the 21st of August, I found a man downstairs eating dead zombies. How can he even do that? He took out a clot from their head, which he ate without immediately leaving the zombies. Was it really edible? On the 30th of August, I discovered that all the penicillin had been stolen from me. This was my only hope for salvation. On the 1st of September, I decided to leave this cage-like house. Even if the world around is full of infected people, I am not going to starve to death in my room. So I met for the first time face to face with zombies. I took out a kitchen knife and there were only two options. Either the zombie will eat me or I will eat it. This was the last entry in the diary. It looks like the author of this diary never survived his first zombie encounter. In any case, the diary gave Mason an understanding of what is happening in this world. People infected with a virus turn into zombies that eat people. And judging by the current food shortage situation, most people are already infected. And the most important thing here is him. Penicillin is more precious than gold in this world. And most importantly, Mason could easily buy it in his world. And that meant only one thing. Unexpectedly, Mason again felt the gun at his head. It was the boss of the bandits. He now understood how Melanie could survive because they have a can of penicillin. In a moment, 
Mason was already on his knees, and the boss was examining a jar of penicillin. It was full. He could not believe his eyes, because if he gives it to his leaders, he will be promoted as much as three steps forward. But Mason is not so lucky, because he can go to hell. He immediately realized that he was on the verge of death and said that he had more. Suddenly, Melanie entered the apartment. The boss took Mason hostage and warned Melanie that if she takes one more step, Mason will be gone. Melanie said that if he shoots, then her reaction will not be long in coming. She demanded to let Mason go, and then she will let him live. All the more, it is worth listening to the sounds outside. The noise of the firefight and the smell of fresh human blood attracted a large group of zombies. And if right now they do not go their separate ways, they will all die together at the hands of the rotting dead. The boss of the bandits was called Logan, and he knew perfectly well that the meeting with a group of zombies could be the last. But at the same time, he did not want to let go of such a golden guy like Mason. Logan thought about what to do, and Melanie continued to demand to let Mason go. She killed so many of Logan's brothers, he promised revenge. Logan pushed Mason into Melanie, and he himself released a harpoon and caught on a neighboring building. He began to chain up to a nearby building on automatic traction and promised that the next time she met, she would cut Melanie to pieces and feed the zombies. Mason, meanwhile, was already calm and pressed his face to Melanie's chest. Melanie asked Mason himself to unhook himself or he needs a little help. The city was enveloped in dark night. Hordes of zombies continued to roam the streets aimlessly. Melanie looked out the window and said that they were at a good distance from these walkers after they had a little rest to start walking again. Melanie looked with her bright blue eyes at Mason and said that she would like to clarify a few points. Firstly, who he is and where he gets such rare things as peanuts and penicillin which ordinary people have not had for a long time. Mason did not answer right away. He thought that even though Melanie looks like a very capable girl, she will not reveal her cards for anything, which means that he should not have immediately revealed his cards. He needs to somehow evade the answer. Mason sat down on the table and threw a pack of penicillin to Melanie. Melanie hadn't seen him in such a long time that it felt like she was holding not penicillin, but a large piece of gold. Mason said that she could take the whole jar for herself. Let it be the payment for saving him. And if Melanie promised to follow him and protect him, she could get more. Melanie asked Mason how serious his intentions were. He said that if Melanie agrees, he will give her not only penicillin, but also many other valuable things in this world. Melanie couldn't believe he had anything more important than penicillin. Mason began to talk very tasty. Steamed lamb, bear paw, roast duck and chicken steak burger, roast goose, marinated salted duck, chicken in sauce, bacon, canned eggs, jerky, sausage, smoked chicken with white belly, steamed pork. Melanie stood and imagined these dishes and her stomach hurt. She asked Mason to stop. She wiped her saliva and said that she would not agree to defend him only for these things, especially since he could turn out to be a person from the camp of her opponents. But Mason hastened to reassure her because he did not belong to more than one camp. He said that Melanie can consider him a spoiled, handsome man who will turn her life into a paradise. Mason thought to himself that he was just an unlucky hard worker of the 21st century. Melanie thought that he definitely looked like a spoiled man, but she survived thanks to the penicillin that he gave her. Although she did not like to admit it, he was clearly her savior. After a little thought, Melanie said that she was in business. From now on, she would always follow him and protect him. But if she finds even a hint that his words were a lie, then she will cut him into small pieces and cook cutlets. Mason was pleased with himself because he deserved the trust, and now the accompaniment of a beautiful girl, and now she will always be with him, and maybe finally he will have physical intimacy with a real girl. Mason said that now that there was an oral agreement between them, he would like to ask something, namely what happened to the world. Melanie, like a real school teacher, began to conduct a mini tour of the world. The culprit of the end of the world is a virus that turned normal people into zombies, with an infection rate of approximately 80% reducing the world's population from 9 billion to 1, and the rest of the people became the walking dead. The zombie core has both vegetable and mineral properties. When directly ingested, it provides the body with a large amount of energy for a short period of time. However, if you prepare an evolution potion, then it is possible to evolve with various effects on the body. Evolution potions are divided into three levels. The first level provides the ability to evolve by 20%, the second level by 30%, and the third by 35 while you can use them separately, or you can use them together to increase the chances of evolving. Due to the rapid adaptation of the virus, good powerful antibiotics quickly became ineffective. Namely, 
penicillin could constantly and quickly destroy the infection. But since the microorganisms that synthesize it also mutated, penicillin became an especially valuable medicine for saving lives. As soon as the virus began to infect humanity and people realized that it was impossible to defeat it, people began to unite in groups. At the moment, there are three organizations operating in the city. This is Camp 17, Building the Earth and Ascending Together. The group they met earlier was from Camp 17. They are the real bandits. They openly burn, kill and rob everyone in their path, have a thirst for all kinds of women. Their boss kills for pleasure and even eats human flesh. Mason thought a little over all the words of Melanie, and in general the situation in the city was clear to him. Melanie looked outside and said that there were a lot of zombies around, and since Mason can't do anything at all, they should look for a place to sleep and move out only at dawn. Mason sat on the bed, and Melanie next to the sofa, she told him to go to bed because he was of little use, so she would be on guard. He looked closely at her face. It was hard to imagine that she was as combative as he had seen her some time ago. Mason lay down on the bed and said that he needed to move back to the 21st century. The system has started the migration. Mason opened his eyes. It was a little hard for him, as if someone was sitting on him. When he opened his eyes completely, he saw a busty girl in front of him, who in a gentle, sweet voice, asked him if he woke up. Mason quickly got up from the bed and pushed the girl away from him. The girl was his mistress. He asked why she came to him. The landlady said he was hit by a car, but the doctor said that everything will pass. It's good that she made an emergency contact. Otherwise, the hospital could not find anyone who would pay his hospital expenses. Mason asked when she managed to do all this, but the hostess did not listen to him and asked what he would like to eat. Mason was embarrassed by the fact that so much care is shown to him. The hostess laughed playfully. She even felt embarrassed that Mason was so embarrassed. She got up from the bed and said that she would go and buy everything he needed. Mason really needed some things that he could take to a parallel world, and he agreed. While no one was there, he needed to deal with the system. He realized that if you turn to the system, then a kind of menu will appear on your hand. There were only three icons, memory, transfer, and charging. Immediately, he had a logical question how to charge it and how much charge was left. Literally ten minutes passed, and the girl had already returned, all out of breath from the weight of two large packages. Mason quickly got out of bed and wanted to help, but the girl said that he shouldn't overexert himself. He only needs to rest. The girl's name was Emma. She was very rich and constantly showed attention to Mason. He understood this very well, but in view of the fact that he had no money at all, he believed that he was not worthy of her and did not reciprocate her feelings. But suddenly, a brilliant idea came to his mind. If he has such a unique system, then with the help of trade between the worlds, he will be able to get rich both there and here. Suddenly, the door to the room slammed open. It was Emma's uncle, and she asked angrily what he was doing there. Uncle said he came to pick her up and take her to Liam's for dinner. Emma got angry and said that she would not go to dinner with him, as she had her own plans. Uncle did not listen to her and simply pushed her out of the ward because it was a direct order from her father. Uncle closed the door of the ward in front of her and told her to wait downstairs. He had a serious conversation with Mason. He silently approached Mason's bed and looked directly at him. Mason asked what problems he has. The uncle said that the problem should have been solved by itself. Was the money they offered Mason really not enough? Mason suddenly asked what if he becomes rich. Uncle thought for a while and said that there is a good phrase. A small person always has big ambitions, but he knew everything about Mason. Therefore, he is sure that having lived his whole life, Mason will never reach the top. However, Mason did not agree with him, and his words sounded like a call to action for him. In another world, the sun has already begun to shine. Melanie actively tried to wake up Mason. Mason woke up yawning a little, and Melanie looked out the window and said that it would take about one hour to get to their base from here. The streets were teeming with hordes of zombies. Melanie boldly walked along the sheer roof of the former shops, and Mason, holding on to the wall in horror, followed her. After an hour of travel, they stopped at the edge of one of the roofs. Melanie threw a pebble at a nearby building, and from this building, a suspension bridge began to descend. After that, they entered the base along this bridge. Mason said that the base is very well hidden. From the outside, he would never have guessed that there was something here. Melanie boldly moved along the corridors of the base, and Mason silently followed her. She entered the room where the completely bandaged girl was lying. Apparently, she was bitten, and she was covered with spots. The infection had already begun to completely absorb her body. It was her sister Becca, and Melanie immediately gave her a penicillin tablet, happily informing her that she would get better very soon. Mason asked what happened, why her sister looked so bad. 
Melanie said that she was injured by zombies. She went on a sortie specifically to get the core of a mutant zombie. She could exchange it for penicillin, but was ambushed. Becca asked if she was all right, if she was hurt. Melanie said that she was fine, and she also brought a friend who got them penicillin, and if not for him, they would never have met. Becca did not see Mason. She immediately thanked him for saving him. He was a little uncomfortable, because he got these medicines quite easily. He was amazed how two fragile girls could survive in such a terrible world. Melanie prepared food and handed the plate to Mason. He was very happy about this, because they were on their feet all day. He quickly pounced on the food and began to chew, but he immediately spat out the entire contents into the trash can. Melanie ate the contents of the plate with pleasure and with surprise asked Mason if he did not like it at all. Mason almost vomited. He asked if they always eat such things here. He even began to cry a little. Melanie again asked if the food she cooked was so tasteless. Mason said that it was enough for them to eat such garbage. Melanie replied that she could hardly fish it all out of the river. Mason started looking through his pockets and asked Melanie to open her mouth. What Mason put in her mouth was just yummy. This rich milky taste is simply divine sweetness. Melanie froze and did not move, even though she had a storm of emotions in her head. Mason waved his hand in front of her face and said that it was an ordinary toffee. Melanie finally came to her senses and said that it was amazing. He was supposed to have another candy, and he immediately began to look for it in his pockets. He put the second candy in Melanie's mouth. Melanie greedily closed her mouth and began to chew directly with Mason's fingers. It was a real treat. Mason was already a little afraid of her. She asked if he could get more of these sweets. Now Mason was careful not to put sweets in her mouth and put everything on the table. Melanie immediately gave one candy to her sister. The candy melted in her mouth and sated her not only with energy but also with positive. She immediately asked where such a treat came from, to which Melanie replied that their friend had given them this candy. The swelling began to slowly subside from Becky's face after she took the pill, and the candy returned happiness and the desire to live in her. Mason felt sorry for these girls. They were happy with such simple things. He could not stand it and dumped on the table all that he had from food. Melanie couldn't believe her eyes. These were the delicious treats she'd read about so often in books. Is that really all for the two of them? asked Melanie, to which Mason replied that they don't have to worry because he still has a lot of them. She thought for a moment and decided to thank him. She took out a filled bag and handed it to Mason. He asked what was in it. Melanie said that these are all the cores that she managed to collect, and now they belong to him. As soon as she handed him the cores, the seal on her left hand began to burn. Were they somehow connected? Mason agreed to take them, but asked her if she was sure that she wanted to give them all at once. Apparently it was a very valuable thing. The penicillin he gave them saved their lives, and the same food costs a lot more, but in the future she will collect more cores and repay all the debt. Mason took a bag of cannonballs and asked if they had a toilet. Melanie said that it was around the corner. He went into the toilet, which was just a hole in the floor, which was obviously very deep. But nothing else could be expected, so Mason set about implementing the plan. While he is alone, it's time to study how the cores and the program interact in his body. He brought one core to his hand, and it began to be sucked inward. In a second, it completely disappeared. The voice in my head said that the charge was replenished. The transfer possibilities plus two, the total number of transfer possibilities is three. Mason decided that he needed to recharge more. While he replenished the charge over and over again, the nuclei began to spill out of the bag into the toilet. The charge had already been recharged to nine carry possibilities. Mason decided that nine were enough for now, but what about the remaining cores? He looked closely at the bag and was surprised where the rest of the cores were. Mason looked into the toilet and understood that all of them had spilled into the toilet from which a terrible stench was emanating. His face just went pale. Mason came out of the toilet so upset that he looked like a ghost. Melanie immediately asked what happened to him, to which he replied that there were simply problems with digestion. Melanie again put the porridge she had cooked on the table and said that Mason needed to eat to restore his strength. Mason did not understand why they should eat it again because he gave them a lot of delicious food. But Melanie said that it was impossible to eat such valuable food every day especially since she tried very hard and caught the ingredients from the river. It was impossible to waste good. Mason stopped Melanie and said that there is nothing to save. If necessary, he will bring more. She ate her porridge and said that he gave them all the food he had. She didn't know that he had supplies in the system storage and getting more food right now would be very strange. But his supplies would obviously not last the three of them for several days. So they had to go back and grab more. Mason came up with a story. He said that he was a merchant and supplies were constantly brought to him for trade. 
so there would always be enough food. But why didn't he immediately say about it? Mason said that he did not trust Melanie right away, but tomorrow he would go for the goods and bring more food. A new day has come. Mason said that he would go for the goods, but Melanie stopped him. She put the revolver in his hand. But why this revolver is so small? Melanie replied that it did not matter at all. The main thing was that it was suitable for covert killings. Mason thanked her and said that he would be back very soon. Immediately after the door slammed shut, Becca got out of bed. Melanie was pleasantly surprised. She said that the pills that the guy brought worked very well. Becca was removing her bandages and asked Melanie to follow him to see where he went. His behavior and appearance are not like those of the locals, and he also knows very little about our world. The words that he is a merchant are most likely just a lie to distract attention. Although he is extremely generous to them, it is too early to trust him yet. Mason walked through the buildings of the city for a long time. He went into some room, looked around like no one was following him, and it was possible to get down to business. It's time to jump into the real world. He woke up again in the hospital and decided that it was time to leave. Otherwise, he had no money at all for such a long stay in the hospital. This month, he again failed to find a job. His savings were already running out. They were about to run out before it seemed to him that he could get rich. But in fact, he is just a poor man. But now he needed to take valuable food for that world. Food and medicine are highly valued in that world, but he has no customers at all. If he goes to that thug camp, they will just take everything away and kill him. Mason placed a whole bunch of products on the cash register and asked him to calculate it. Although Melanie was quite strong, but in what way she could help him not become food for zombies? She said that there are also peaceful camps. It might be worth starting to trade with them. The total came to a thousand dollars. Mason came to his house with full packages. There was still enough space in the system storage. He needed to grab more change of clothes. For one move, you need half the core. You need to try to save them. He recalled that toilet with regret. He, in fact, should not have saved so much if all the cores had not spilled into it. Melanie peered into the distance and tried to understand where Mason had gone, but he just seemed to have disappeared. Was it really so bad for her to keep surveillance? She stood on the roof of the building and believed that here she had an excellent place for observation. Here she would be able to understand where he went. Mason moved back more prepared. He decided to put some of the things in a backpack so that they would not suspect anything. Last time there were much fewer zombies here, it was better to bypass them anyway. But the further Mason went, the more zombies accompanied him. He was already on the edge of the roof, but there was a whole horde of zombies. It was clearly impossible to pass here. In front of him hung only a few wires, through which it was possible to pass to the next building. He thought it best not to risk it and return. However, some zombies had already climbed onto the roof and followed his juicy, tender body. It was necessary to urgently think of something, because the happy zombies ran after him. One of the zombies pushed him off the roof. He began to fall rapidly and the food scattered around the area. However, at the last moment, Mason quickly managed to grab the wires and the zombies just fell down. Mason began to ask to be transferred to the real world. But the program said that the passive ability of climbing is being used at the moment. There is room for improvement. Mason held onto the wires with all his strength. The program said that he had seven skill points. The cost of upgrading is one skill point and re-upgrading costs two points. Mason did not listen to the program at all and twice shouted to improve. Passive climbing ability improved by two levels, spent three skill points. It was cool. Now Mason could hold onto the wire with one hand, just some kind of miracles. And he could walk on the wire just like on the ground. Maybe now he is a real Spider-Man. He crawled along the wire in a parody of Spider-Man, and Melanie quietly watched him. She then thought that Mason was an ordinary sissy. But in fact, he is very dexterous. After all, Becca was right. He is not as simple as it might seem at first glance. Mason finally jumped onto the roof of another building. That road was filled with zombies. He decided to climb higher to find another way to the base. He looked around and decided to climb another building. Immediately, Mason began to climb the building's plumb lines. He wondered if there were any other skills in this system. He wanted to try them as soon as possible. On one of the floors, Mason stopped and looked out the window. The building was full of walking office dead. They saw Mason in the window and immediately rushed to attack, but the glass did not allow them to do so. He did not climb higher and decided to look at them closely, being sure that the glass would not let them get it. However, the crowd of office zombies did not think so. Under the weight of their bodies, the glass cracked, and that's when Mason realized that not everything is as wonderful as he thought. The glass shattered and he fell off. He was able to grab onto the edge of the floor and began to fend off the zombies with his other hand. With a wave of his hand, he cut off the zombie's head. His arms became so strong that he could easily blow off a zombie's head with one blow. 
The second zombie, and immediately the second blow. The head came off like the first zombie. However, Mason realized that even if he were Edward with scissors, he simply could not cope with such a crowd of zombies. It's time to get out of there quickly. It was a rather dangerous game, because if they pierced even a piece of skin, it would be possible to say goodbye to life. In this world, it was clearly not worth showing off. By the way, it seemed or suddenly became easier for Mason to move around. Where did the bag of food go? The backpack fell along with all the contents. Mason even began to cry why it always happens. He brought nothing at all for this trip. All precious things were lost, but he spent all his hard-earned fortune on them. He was going to save this money for his funeral and could not say goodbye to them so easily. He is simply obliged to return them at any cost. He crawled up to the window again and lured the zombies in with his fresh, tender, meaty hand. Zombies like animals began to jump out of the window in the hope of feasting on his hand. Office zombies finally decided to fly a little. It seems that all the zombies were already in flight. From such a large number, Mason even had a little numb hand. But it seems that the zombies are over. Mason climbed into the building and took his backpack. He thought that they should not be afraid. You just need to cheat correctly. But something was clearly moving fast behind him. He definitely saw a red shadow, or maybe he just imagined it. It wasn't just a shadow, it wasn't even just a zombie, it was a mutant, and very fast and dexterous, who also longed to taste Mason. The mutant hovered over Mason, and he did not know at all what to do. Drops of blood from his mouth started dripping onto Mason's face, and after a second of waiting, the mutant rushed to the attack. Mason flew out of the office from one blow. However, realizing the danger of the situation, he immediately rushed to run. However, this mutant was not so simple. His speed was huge, and Mason for him was another living toy, which is quite possible to dine. He ran with all his might, but the mutant was so fast that Mason did not even see how he was approaching. If he was transferred to the real world, then when he returned, he would be here again, so it was just a waste of cause. The mutant was already very close, and Mason said that he wanted to spend all his remaining points on improvements. All points spent, climbing speed, upgraded to level 6, special skills, bravery and prudence, and firm stride gained. At the same moment, Mason managed to dodge the mutant that had thrown itself. Now he saw all his movements and still had time to dodge attacks. The mutant was still chasing Mason. He spent all the points, and this only equalized them in speed, but he still could not escape from him. Mason hoped that after such a pumping of abilities he would be able to press and destroy him and he would not be able to run at such a speed for a long time. His strength quickly left him. If you slow down even for one second, then he will catch up with him and grab his neck to bite. But something had to be done, and Mason came up with a plan. He stopped abruptly, and the mutant was just waiting for this. Finally, he would feast on fresh flesh. Mason managed to grab a piece of stick and sent it to the flying mutant. Due to the mutant's tremendous speed, the stick entered his body like a knife through butter. She pierced the mutant, screaming in pain through and through. Mason climbed into the mutant's soft skull in search of its core. And fortunately, he was able to get it. She directly shone in his hands, because this was his first well-deserved core. He was exhausted from the fatigue of running, but at the same time glad that all this was not in vain. A few minutes later, Mason left the building with a backpack on his shoulder, and Melanie was watching him from the roof. She knew perfectly well that this building was just infested with zombies, and she could not believe that he managed to get out. Mason did not notice her and thought that at the moment he is approximately on the same level with Melanie in terms of strength. Following the example of Melanie, he threw a pebble and the entrance to their shelter opened. Mason immediately began to call the girls so that they could look at the new little things that he was able to convey to them with such difficulty. On the threshold, he was met by Becca, who had greatly changed after their last meeting. She was a young girl, dressed in short shorts and a t-shirt, that was tight around her huge chest. Mason did not even immediately understand who was standing in front of him, because when she was all bandaged, he did not even see her face. The girl winked at him and introduced herself. Did he really not recognize her? She came close to him and began to touch his body, asking where the blood was on his clothes, how he felt and if he was injured. Becca pressed her breasts against him and began rubbing against his body. She said she'd better take a full look at him. Mason could not even imagine such a thing. Are his dreams really starting to come true? Such a sweet girl wants to fully examine him and even spend her big breasts. He already began to think that this world is not so bad. She visually examined Mason and said that she did not find any bites, so he was really fine. Took his hand and asked him to go wash with her because he was so dirty. Mason did not immediately understand what Becca wants, he asked again. She really calls him to take a shower together. 
Becker said that now there are very few sources of water, winked again and said that they need to save money. Warm water was already pouring over Becky's body. She was the first to go into the shower completely naked. Water flowed down her huge breasts and she simply lured Mason to join her. He was a virgin and he could never even dream of such a thing. Becca called Mason over and over again. He asked her if her sister would be against it. But Becca hastened to reassure him because she and Melanie often bathed together. Mason was still standing in front of the entrance and could not make up his mind to enter. He quickly took off his clothes and said that if you do not enter, it will be a clear display of disrespect, so you should not refuse. He had already approached Becca from behind and wanted to make himself comfortable. Looking at her tender, young, wet body, drool rolled from his mouth. But someone from behind grabbed him by the hair. It was Melanie, who was clearly not happy with his behavior. She rudely asked what else he was doing and pulled his head towards her. Mason said that he really didn't manage to see anything, because since childhood he had minus eight eyesight. He couldn't even see anything in front of him. They got out of the bath, and Mason immediately decided to switch the topic of conversation. So as not to test Melanie's patience, he began to get everything that he was able to convey from the real world. For a balanced diet, he even took fruits with him. Melanie immediately forgot about everything that happened before, because she saw bananas only in pictures. Mason unwrapped one banana for her and said that she could eat it right now and not be shy. He began to push the banana into Melanie's mouth. It was slow and tight enough because she actively licked it with her tongue so that it would go into her mouth more easily. Mason's thoughts were not about the banana at all, and he continued to slowly put it into Melanie's mouth. The banana was already quite wet, but in order to better and more clearly feel its taste, she polished it with her tongue without stopping. Finally, a piece of banana broke and remained in her mouth. She was filled with admiration for its sweet taste. Mason closed his eyes and replayed this moment in his head again and again. A few minutes later, Becca was already out of the shower and, seeing so many products, she thought that she was in a dream. Could Mason give it all to them? It's very expensive. But Mason said that he perfectly understands the value of these things in this world, but he promised to be generous to them if they would protect him. Melanie finally swallowed a slice of banana and thought that now she must definitely keep her promise. Mason said that with his savings he could stock up only once and also figure out a way to get the cause. Melanie asked why he needed money, because now they are just priceless paper. It's even uncomfortable to wipe with them, to which Mason answered that his trade is based on the exchange of rare metals, gold, silver, or something else like that. Melanie looked around and walked away somewhere. She walked over to the table and took something out from under it. On the table at which Mason was sitting, she placed several yellow ingots, which were very similar to gold. They sparkled like real gold bars. Mason stretched out his hands to them and began to touch them. Are these real gold bars? Melanie said that she didn't even remember what it was called. These bars were square, so she decided to put them under the legs of the table so that he would not stagger. If it suits Mason, then she has five or six more of the same under the table. Mason even sweated a little when he saw so much gold in front of him. And Melanie opened a pack of chips and ate them with great pleasure, saying that they do not use it, and he can take everything. It was already quite dark outside, Mason lay and could not get enough of the fact that now he is truly rich. While he was sleeping, someone entered his room. Mason did not hear this at all, and his dreams were only about how he would now be able to spend his new wealth. However, he did not even suspect that all his dreams, like reality, could end in an instant. Becca was already standing in front of him with a knife raised up. She was already lowering the knife in order to stop Mason's dreams forever. However, Melanie stopped her hand. They quietly asked Becca what she was doing, what had gotten into her. Becca said that if Mason is killed right now, then all his precious things will belong to them. Melanie said that they could not do this because he saved them if it were not for the penicillin, which he gave them just like that. Then they both already made up the company of the dead who roamed the streets aimlessly. Becca reminded Melanie how not so long ago another guy was able to ingratiate herself with her and then betrayed them by telling the bandits about their whereabouts then everyone from their camp died. Does she really want to repeat? If Melanie had not stopped Mason, he would have lost his lustful eyes in his soul. Melanie insisted on her own because Mason had no reason to spend such a value on them as penicillin. Even if they sell everything they have, they won't even earn five penicillin tablets. And Mason gave them a whole pack. He's definitely not a traitor. Suddenly their conversation was interrupted by Mason himself and asked what they were whispering about. Becca, without thinking for a long time, jumped into his bed and said that she wanted to sleep with him. Mason did not even suspect her intentions, 
and said that he did not even need to ask about this, because he would gladly take her to his bed. Melanie wanted to save him from death and said that she also wanted to sleep with him. Mason could not even believe that he was so lucky and said that there would be enough space for both girls. Mason's happiness knew no bounds. Who would have thought that two pretty young girls would fall asleep with him because he just brought them some food from the supermarket? Becca lay down, snuggling close to him, and Melanie lay like a tin soldier, not at all sharing Becky's opinion. As soon as Mason fell asleep, Becca took out a sickle from under the blanket. She wanted to end Mason unceremoniously with one blow, but Melanie kicked the sickle out of her hands. Melanie's foot not only knocked the sickle out of Becky's hands, but also hit Mason right in the stomach. He woke up again and asked why Melanie sat on top of him. Melanie said she wanted to sleep with him alone. In this case, she will be able to ensure his safety. If suddenly someone wants to attack him, Mason agreed with her, because safety is above all. And yet the night passed for Mason without injury. Becca sat down next to Mason and asked him how much he'd evolved. Mason replied that he was the most ordinary handsome man and did not evolve at all. Then Becca asked how he managed to climb the skyscraper. Mason immediately asked how she knew that. She said that she had a rather keen sense of smell, and when he came, she smelled everything. She started pretending to be a little shy girl and said that only the strongest evolved people can get out of that building alive and how Mason did it. So far, he could not be told about the program. He could only lie. He said that he got a little lost yesterday, and only thanks to the revolver that Melanie gave him could he survive. This meant that Mason shoots well. Melanie suggested that he try to shoot at the range. Mason started shooting clumsily, but missed the target more than once. Melanie asked if he was aiming at the target accurately. How could he shoot so badly he even held the weapon incorrectly? Melanie approached him from behind, took his hand and offered to teach him how to shoot correctly. The first step was to relax the shoulder. There was no need to keep the body in such a tense state. You need to stand still and now you can only aim. And now the shot. A hit, but not exactly on target. Mason, like a child, was delighted that he could hit the target. The program started working and reported that an improvement was available, possession of ranged weapons. Now it became clear to Mason that there are other skills in the system, but points are needed for improvement, but he didn't have them at all. There was only one core from a red mutant, but these points are better spent on moving. Mason, without thinking for a long time, asked Melanie if there is a place where you can buy mutant cores. Melanie said there's a place where you can exchange valuables for cannonballs. It's two kilometers away. Mason was glad to hear and asked her to take him there. A few hours of traveling around the city, and they were already in place. Melanie knocked on the fenced-in area, and they entered at once. One-eyed Alex was sitting there reading a newspaper. It was a local merchant who had almost everything your heart desires, but it cost a lot of money. As soon as they appeared in Alex's field of vision, he immediately pointed his gun at them. He did not immediately recognize Melanie and saw an unfamiliar Mason. She asked him if the old warrior was really afraid of zombies. Alex said that he was not afraid of zombies. He was more afraid of living people. Mason got straight to the point. He asked if Alex could sell him the cores. Alex immediately asked what he would get for these cores. Mason put three cans of canned food on the table. Alex couldn't believe his eyes. It was early 21st century canned food, not many left. Alex just wanted to pick them up when Mason intercepted the canned food from him and said that first let him show the cause. The one-eyed one took a puff on his cigarette and said that you couldn't fool him. At first glance he was a fool, but in fact he was smart. Mason said that at the very beginning of the conversation, Alex correctly noted that you should not be afraid of zombies, but of people, so you should always be on your guard. Alex told them to wait, now he will bring everything they need. He was gone for several minutes and he put a bag of kernels on the table, he said that these were all the kernels that he had, only 11 pieces. Alex said that for a can of expired meat, he gives two cores, but Mason had the highest quality meat, so for one can he will give four cores, for a total of 12, but he has 11 pieces, so he offered to make a deal now, and the rest he will give later. Mason said that he didn't have to return anything, and he would also give Alex the fourth jar on top, but he has one request. Mason took out an ingot and asked Alex what kind of metal it was. The old man examined the ingot and said that his eyesight was not the best, but it looked like gold. Great, Mason took the ingot back and said that the old man's eyesight is fine. An additional can of stew is a commission, because Alex probably knows a lot of people and asked to warn everyone to look for gold for him, and in return he will give them stew. Alex said that such a trading plan sounded quite profitable, but he could not understand why he needed gold because it had long ceased to be profitable. 
Mason told Alex not to worry about this. The more gold, the better. Finally, Mason was able to replenish the charge and he got 24 skill points. He immediately upgraded his ranged weaponry ability by four levels, leaving him with only nine skill points left and gained a new ability, Fatal Bullet. Mason decided to test his newfound skill. Now he confidently shot at the target. Every shot he fired was right on target. This is the real level of a skilled shooter. Mason asked the program what kind of new ability the Fatal Bullet is. The program replied that this skill can only be used for free once a day. Mason agreed and asked how he could use this skill. The program said that first you need to utter a cry, a fatal bullet, and then shoot. Mason asked what these stupid rules are. Why using this skill he should scream, he's not a superhero. The program said that people like to use the name of the technique before they perform it. This method has been used for centuries in accordance with human habits. Mason looked around to make sure no one was watching him. He, like a real karateka, began to perform the technique. For a start, he stood up. Now the gun is up. The fatal bullet shouted the words loudly. Then he immediately fired a shot. Both sisters watched Mason's pirouettes, and it was not entirely clear to them what kind of training he had. Mason looked into the distance. The bullet hit the neighboring building. He looked for several minutes at the place where the bullet hit, but nothing happened. And what then is the difference is not clear. When Mason went inside the shelter, he thought that he should study his skills better. He immediately noticed how the girls put things in order and make room for him. He immediately drew attention to the fact that Melanie herself was carrying four huge boxes and said that he was ready to help because they were incredibly heavy. Melanie said that she didn't need help because for the evolved such weight is not a problem at all. Mason immediately asked if all evolved are so incredibly strong. Almost all, Melanie replied. In any case, they are much stronger than ordinary survivors, but those who could evolve are very few. Mason got excited about this idea and asked what it takes, how to become evolved. Melanie thought for a moment and said that there are three ways to do this. The first way is to experience the infection that entered the bloodstream after a bite. But there were many such cases during the outbreak of the virus. But now you will not find this. The second way was that you can swallow the core. And if you don't get torn apart, then with a 10% chance you will become evolved. The third method needed evolution potions. She had heard that large organizations had such potions. That's it, Mason was delighted, because he can exchange a lot of food for such potions. Melanie said that she could take him to try his luck in the unification of the mainland buildings. They are not like in the 17th camp. They need a favor. So they might be able to exchange such potions. Mason completely agreed with her and said that they were moving out tomorrow. A new sunny day has come. They were already leaving. And Mason asked why Becca didn't go with them. And lately it began to seem to him that she was looking at him strangely. But Melanie reassured him, saying that she was looking at him like that because of bad eyesight. They walked down the street, and Mason noticed that there were more and more zombies near the base. Melanie said she would have to find time to clear the area of them. Meanwhile, Becca was shooting at the target. She was angry that Melanie didn't let her kill Mason. At some point, the neighboring building began to collapse. She looked at this spectacle with surprise, but why it itself fell apart like a house of cards was not clear. They moved on and on through the streets of the city. There were a lot of zombies there. It was necessary to act quietly, so as not to attract the attention of the mutants and the rest of the hordes. At some point, they came to the garage. Mason had not been here before. Melanie opened a garage with a nice armored car. She said that she organized another supply point in this garage just in case. Then they would go by car. In about two hours, they would arrive at the camp of the Association of Builders of the Mainland. They were driving fast down the highway, and some zombies were trying to keep up with them. Mason warned Melanie that several zombies were chasing them, but Melanie did not care. She was sure that they would break away from them. Melanie asked if Mason was sure of his decision, because even if you use the highest level potion, there is a chance that he will die. Mason said that he wasn't sure, but the main purpose of their trip was to exchange goods. First, you need to see what they have in exchange. According to Melanie, this camp was also something of a trading organization but there is no guarantee that they will not be killed and all the goods will not be taken. So you need to trade small first and then look at their reaction. While Mason was filled with thoughts about trading, a zombie appeared right in front of his face. It was a whole group of red zombies that quickly overtook their car. Melanie told him to quickly get a gun and shoot. With their powerful, sharp hands, the zombies pierced the car like a sieve. Mason shot non-stop, but could not hit more than one zombie. He did not understand what the problem was, he was a skilled shooter. 
Melanie said that they were super fast red zombies that were able to dodge bullets. Melanie told Mason to get behind the wheel and drive as fast as possible. They quickly changed and Melanie was already on the roof of the car. The zombie rushed at her and she at the zombie, but at the same time she had her saw in her hands. After the meeting, the zombies just fell apart. However, there were many mutants and this will clearly not be an easy walk. Melanie jumped off the car, cutting another mutant in half. She fell to the asphalt after riding a few meters on her back. However, the mutants were just waiting for this. It was incredibly difficult to withstand such a number of powerful mutants. Melanie began to realize that her chances of injury were zero, and before the last attack, she simply closed her eyes. But as soon as she opened them, she saw Mason in front of her. He stood with a gun in his hands, and all the red mutants lay around them. Of course, it was very dangerous. One more moment and I would not have had time, said Mason. He immediately saw that Melanie fell from the roof of the car and the creatures rushed at her. Mason immediately stopped the car and rushed to help. He had a well-pumped climbing skill, which gave him the opportunity to develop tremendous speed. And if these zombies could easily dodge bullets, then what can they do if the gun is in their face? That's the only way it turned out to put several zombies at once. Melanie realized that Mason is strong. He managed to kill several red zombies at once. He is equal in strength to the first level of the evolved one. At this time, Mason, as a child, began to collect cores from mutants, saying that now he would be able to improve his abilities. He looked for the cores but could not find it. Melanie stopped him. She asked him to look around. Thousands of zombies were moving towards them from all sides. But where did so many of them come from? Probably they were attracted by the shots. They clearly needed to leave as soon as possible. Both of them quickly ran to the car, shooting back at the approaching zombies. Mason did not stop shooting, but Melanie asked him to save the bullets. They would still not be enough to kill everyone. However, now they could not drive either. The car was simply mired in a huge horde of dead, smelly zombies, ready to die for a piece of fresh human meat. The whole machine was surrounded by an incredible number of zombies who wanted only one thing, to get the flesh inside the people. Mason asked Melanie how many bullets she had left. What tea and answered that, not so much as I wanted. The guy took out a magazine from a pistol, and after looking, it turned out that he had only ten bullets left. This crowd cannot be taken with so many bullets. A guy in such conditions can only use a fatal bullet. Previously, the system said that free fatal bullet can only be used once a day. The guy was alarmed, because he did not know for sure whether he could get this fatal bullet. As it turned out, when buying a fatal bullet for the first time, it cost one skill point for each shot, after which he bought seven shots without hesitation for a long time. The gun sparkled with purple rays, which meant that the guy had acquired bullets. Mason decided that he would leave the remaining two skill points for transfer. If eight shots did not help in any way, then he would move to his own time. But in a split second, he remembered that he was not alone in the car. Melanie was next to him, and she definitely couldn't get out of this hell alone. After all, she will simply die here, purely physically. She will not be able to cope with this crowd of zombies alone. At this time, the girl reported that the car is strong. For some time, they will definitely not be able to penetrate. The girl was furious because she said to save bullets, but in the end, the guy spent all the bullets, and the zombies didn't decrease much, but the guy at that moment just laughed at the girl's words. Melanie said that you should always leave at least one bullet just in case, because it might come in handy. But Mason couldn't understand the girl's words, because only one bullet can be of any use. The girl began to tell that she always saves the last bullet, would not want to let these creatures bite herself, and then turn into a zombie. The last bullet should be left for herself. In this world, death is at every step. The girl has long been ready to die at any moment. She just doesn't want her death to be so sad. So she advises the guy to always leave at least one bullet. The guy did not particularly react to the word of the girl, but only nervously looked at her. No effect. Mason fired seven fatal bullets, but nothing special happened. The zombies, as they were outside, remained. So in addition, there were more and more of them. Zombies at this time continued to break into the car with the hope of feasting on the flesh of people. After some time, drops of rain began to make their way onto the zombie's head. It's raining. At least the guy and the girl don't have to worry that they might die of thirst. Now they can only pray that there are other people nearby who would distract the zombies. But there are definitely no such good people. It is clear that the zombies had nothing to do with this rain. The guy noticed that some kind of stench started abruptly, but as it turned out, rotten meat on the body of a zombie gets soaked from the water. Such a stench always stands during the rain. As it turned out, the partners came up with a cunning plan. They put buckets under the hatch in the car so that water would fill there. But the buckets were already full, 
and the hole in the roof had to be repaired. Pretty heavy rain. For a long time the girl has not seen this. If it continues for another day, then they may see something interesting. The guy could not understand what the girl meant by the word interesting. Zombies themselves are immortal, but water can wash them away. So right now they are watching the process of zombies standing in front of their eyes. When water gets on them, their skin swells, so it seems as if they have become living people again. However, this is only temporary. At this time, the rain was not going to stop, on the contrary. Dark, thick clouds with rain gathered around the car and a crowd of zombies. They continue to absorb water, the skin continues to swell. To such an extent that at some point it breaks down and bursts, zombies still won't die from it. It's just that their appearance will become a little more interesting. The guy asked the girl to recover, because from her story, and in addition to this smell, he will definitely feel sick now, and then both of them will be uncomfortable sitting in the car. But in any case, it's better to sit in the car like that than outside with a crowd of zombies. The girl turned to the guy to look out the window. The girl noticed that all the zombies outside became more like people, this is true. Almost all the zombies had all the outlines and signs of a person. After one zombie, who was a girl, knelt in front of the mirror, the girl noticed that she seemed to eat as much as she did. The girl would still be alive if the world were normal. Melanie's words felt resentment and sadness for what happened to this world, and directly to this girl. The girl was interrupted by Mason, who asked her to complete it if the world were normal. The girl was surprised at such a sudden and difficult question at the same time. The girl did not really think about it. If there were no zombies if the world was normal, then she would. I would like to become a confectioner. She thought that it was not very suitable for her. Well, the guy had a different opinion. He said that such a profession would suit her. It's not strange because the guy knew better because he lived and can live in a normal world. A few seconds later, a powerful lightning rang out in the sky, which almost lit up the entire clearing on which the girl and the guy were. The guy can't leave Melanie. There's got to be another way. The guy figured he'd get strong in a day and then try to use the climbing ability to avoid Melanie right over the zombies' heads. In a fraction of a second, the faces of the partners were covered with a powerful flash from lightning, from which they were clearly slightly surprised. What a dense flash! This area was always dry, the girl had never seen here from such weather, but the lightning was not going to stop. On the contrary, it took on an unnatural look and was sent straight into the car with the girl and the guy. The flash was so bright that the main characters already covered themselves from it. In seconds, she nevertheless reached her goal, a comma, and hit the car. In a moment, dozens or even hundreds of zombies were defeated by the same lightning from which they scattered in all directions. After the guy opened his eyes, he saw dead zombies lying in front of him. Such a picture clearly struck the guy almost to the point of losing consciousness. And oddly enough, the zombies were all dead, such a powerful discharge of electricity. The girl and the guy still could not believe what had just happened because for the first time they see that all the zombies around were killed by one lightning strike. Well, even though the zombies were dead, the partner had to clear the road from the zombies, otherwise they wouldn't come by car. When they finished cleaning it had already cleared up, they were probably still a little in shock at what had happened. The guy was indescribably glad that they were able to survive under such circumstances, but the girl was also incredibly glad. At this time they reached some huge gates. From above at the post, a man told his partner that a car was approaching, and it was necessary to report to the guard, after which the partner went to report. And at this time, the sentry himself was sleeping sweetly, along with two luxurious girls, and against the background of all this, the man shouted to the sentry to wake up, because the car was dodging. Reluctantly, the sentry, straightening his pants, went out into the street, and complained who had come here at such an early hour. The man asked permission to find out everything. Opening a small gap in the mouths, the man told everyone to get out of the car. The main characters approached the gate, the man said that he had not seen them before, and asked where they would be from, also adding that they were looking for shelter. Mason said that they were merchants. They came to exchange very valuable things, and the girl at that time just watched and was silent. The guardsman at that time putting on their coats told you to get the goods, and he would look at him. The man provided the guard with the guy's goods for exchange. He looked with interest at the canned food that the guy brought. He unpacked the goods with the hope that he would try it. But the girl was outraged by this behavior of the man, because they had not yet received anything in return. She could not understand why on earth he was already opening her. But Mason interrupted the girl and said that it's okay. As soon as the man tastes the product, he asked to try it and tell him how it is. The man said that the guy is smarter than he seems. The man swallowed a juicy piece of meat comma at this time. 
One of the men present looked at it all and was clearly hungry. The man decided to try again. He swallowed everything. Because they were not just hungry, but most likely died of hunger. The guy took another spoon. The girl was again outraged by the behavior of the guy. She believed that she had enough of everything because he was close to eating the whole jar. The man did not understand what it was, made a couple of spoons, and it was already over. He said that he could not even taste the goods. But the guy said that he still had nothing to worry about and held out the canned food for the man to try it. A few minutes later, several empty canned goods were already lying on the table, in which there was nothing from the word at all. Was furious about this, because the man had already eaten eight cans, she asked Mason. Or did he know how many good things they could exchange for them? With a swollen belly, the guy said that he had eaten so well. Then she added that he leaves the broth next to the standing men. In a fraction of a second, not in the literal sense of the word, they began to fight for this broth, which looked very strange and ridiculous from the outside. The man said that the canned food is quite tasty. He orders to notify the guy and the girl in the head of the city. He is great to notify the head of the city. The man then ordered him to follow him. After that, he led them to the estate, where there were a lot of people. It seemed that in this place, they did not feel the zombies outside. At this time, someone asked or people do not want to look. Someone said that they have a top quality product. Mason asked that people live in these houses, to which he was told that they are all refugees whom the head of the city cordially received. If not for him, sooner or later they would all become victims of zombies. In front of the heroes, a man fell straight to the floor. As it turned out, he fell for a reason. He was beaten by some guy who accused him of stealing medicine and promised that he would get it from him now. As it turned out, this someone was a red-haired girl who asked for mercy on her and said that she would not steal anything anymore. Mason immediately ran up to the guy who was beating the girl and asked him to take it easy. You can calmly discuss everything. He could not understand why he should use his hands. Well, the man was furious. And I'll ask the guy, or at least knows what she did. He said that the girl was stealing medicine from the warehouse. The medicine for all of them is more expensive than food. The unauthorized use of medicines is punishable by death. One has only to order the head of the city, and they will not leave a living place on the girl. The man said that the girl dared to steal so much, but it was good that he managed to catch her. He asked her where she hid the medicine and ordered her to give it quickly. The man told the guy that people from the outside world do not worry about it. The thief will be sentenced accordingly, after which he added that they should follow him further. After that, the man dragged the girl with him into the hall here. The man was wondering what punishment the girls would endure in court. The man said that the head of the city was busy today, so he would not be able to receive them. There was a guest room on the second floor. The man handed over the key and said that tomorrow the head would accept them too. A new sunny day has come. An elderly woman walked around the estate and asked if people had not seen her granddaughter. After the grandmother asked the man again or he definitely didn't see her, he aggressively told her to get off, also adding that he was late for mining work, after which the grandmother approached some stranger and began to report that her granddaughter had red hair, a small pigtail, and also added that she had been gone since yesterday evening. Mason noticed that the girl who was not seen yesterday must be her granddaughter. But the man said that the guy should not worry because she should be informed about everything. But Mason decided to wait for me and approached my grandmother, after which he told her that her granddaughter had stolen the medicine. So now she is in the building here and advised me to ask around there. It was clear from the expression on the man's face that he was slightly dissatisfied with this. The grandmother began to blame herself, arguing that the girl had stolen the medicine to cure her illness. If anyone needed to be taken into custody, then it was her. She believed that since she was taking these medicines, it was her who should be judged. But the guy's dialogue was interrupted by a man who said that they needed to go, otherwise they would be late for a meeting with the head of the city. The man walked into the building and said in his head that that trader named Mason had arrived. At this time, the head took food and with a full mouth told him to come in. Entering the room, the guy saw in front of him five guards, the head of the city, and two women sitting near the head, and at that time he was eating. The guy said that he was that merchant. The man said that his principle of trade is that he only exchanges with people he knows, but according to the canned food guard, what the guy brought was very good. The head asked if it was really true. Mason said that he also had fresh canned meat, who did not try it. Everyone liked it. He added that the head could also try it. A few seconds later, canned food was brought on a tray. He slowly, without haste, opened the jar. After that, he immediately threw in all the canned food, and not like the man at the post did. 
who ate in small pieces with a spoon. The head began to chew. Well, let's make a strange movement. He instantly grabbed all the canned food at once, which could not but surprise everyone present. After that, having squeezed the canned food, he began to eat them, to be honest, like some kind of pig. After the man lived, he said that it was just overeating. This meat is tens of thousands of times better than what he usually eats. He asked how many more cans the guy has. He takes everything and gives everything he wants in exchange. It is clear that the guy was delighted with such news. He also added that the head understands the product. The man insisted that the guy say what he wants to receive in return. The guy was brief. He said he needed cores, an evolution potion, and more gold. But the corner officer clearly did not understand what gold was, after which a subordinate ran up to him and began to explain what gold really is. After a few seconds, the man with a smile on his face said that of course he would have gold, because in this world this is one of the most unnecessary things. The head ordered the man to go with the guy to the warehouse, pick up the goods, and collect for him what they give in return. But the guy interrupted the chapter and said that he had one more request. It's clear that the head did not understand what request the guy was talking about. Mason began to tell that yesterday a girl stole medicine from his warehouse. Now she is in the building here. The guy said that he would give him three times as much medicine as compensation for damages. He only asks to let her go. The head asked the subordinate if it was really true. What happened? What really happened? He also added that the thief had already been taken into custody. The judge sentenced her to prison. The head thought, since the guy is ready to compensate for their losses in a threefold amount, then the head remains in the black. After the transaction is completed, the guard will take the guy to the courthouse to free the girl. The guy thanked the head. The subordinate gave the guy a box and said that here is what he asked for in exchange for the goods in an equivalent amount. Ten gold bars of 100 cores and two evolution potions. Now the guy has hundreds of cores and he can upgrade a bunch of abilities, but now the first thing to do is to go to his time and exchange this cream for money. Although the guy does not know how much it all costs, but now he is definitely rich. Also, the man provided the guy with a comma and let me know that there was an order to release the girl. He also added that he was taking the guy to the courthouse. But the guy could not understand where Melanie was. He suspected that she was already waiting for him at the entrance. Meanwhile, people gathered in the square and looked at something very alarmed, and fear was visible in their eyes. Hanging legs in the blood were visible to all present. It was clear from the people that they were really scared. The guy could not understand why there were so many people at the entrance to the courthouse. At that time, the man tried to somehow get through among these people. He believed that people had nothing to do. Apparently, they were given little work in the mine. He promised that tomorrow he would definitely tell the head that the worker would add hours to them. Well, some voice said that there was no need to drive anyone away. After some stranger said that it was he who ordered the people to come, the man immediately fell silent and fell into a slight stupor. The stranger said that let the people see what awaits them, who decides to illegally appropriate the property of the head of the city, everyone present should learn a lesson. Low people who do not belong to the evolved ones can only survive in their world thanks to the generous help of the head of the city. Everything in the city belongs to the head. Using anything unauthorized and without permission is a crime, and also punishable by death. Meanwhile, the same grandmother who was looking for her granddaughter roared with all her might. Intuitively, the guy guessed that the hanging body in the square was the same girl who stole the medicine. The guy instantly became furious with what he saw and from the realization of who was in front of him. At this time, the grandmother did not stop writhing from the incredible pain inside. The guy was even more furious. He could not understand what kind of jokes the stranger had. He was at the peak of his anger. He was ready to tear apart everyone and everything in this square. Mason approached the stranger and grabbed his jacket, after which he asked if human life really meant nothing to him. He also added that the girl stole the medicine to cure her loved one, that's all. The stranger said that this is the first time he sees the guy. He must be a merchant living outside. After that, patience did not get acquainted ended, and he grabbed the guy by the hand. As expected in stranger, he twisted the guy's hand. It was clear from the guy that he was not only unpleasant, it was also painful. In a fraction of a second, the stranger literally dislocated the guy's arm, which could not but hurt. He writhed in pain. I don't get acquainted. I communicate that since the guy is not local, then for the first time he forgives him. As it turned out, this stranger was the supreme judge. The man who was introduced to the guy said that he really was a merchant who came to them from outside. He was here for the first time, so I don't know the rules. He asked to forgive him. The chief judge asked the guy or whether this girl, that is Mason, had to be with him. The guy saw a bound girl in front of him. Fear was visible in her eyes because she did not know what would happen to her next. 
The guy was alarmed and a little scared. He asked what they had done with the girl. The Chief Justice began to explain that this girl had sneaked into the prison, but he managed to catch her in time before she did something stupid in his opinion. It seems that the girl is very angry with the Supreme Judge for ordering the girl to be killed, so he's wondering whether to let her go free. After some thought, the Chief Judge said that he thought she should simply be killed. But the man asked the Chief Judge to take pity, because the guy and the girl brought a rather worthwhile treat to the head. If he kills these merchants, then he will no longer be able to enjoy such delicacies. But the man said that in this case it is enough to leave the sound of only one. The guy's patience snapped. He asked the system to use all the cores to charge. The system said that these cores were enough for three improvements, after which the guy said that he wanted an improvement. Upgrading completed, level 7 at the moment, but also the system detected the guy's bodily injury. Regeneration cost 50 skill points. After the system asked if the guy wants to use the skill points for healing, he firmly and decisively answered yes. He only had 44 skill points left. The guy believed that the judge would definitely kill Melanie unless he managed to catch her so easily. His strength was more than enough. The fatal bullet might have helped to end him, but then all these people would be hit, which the guy would obviously not want. Now, the best solution is to use super speed to grab the girl from them and run away from this city. The guy climbed three levels. The body also feels new strength. He thinks that this is enough to run away. He asked the system to activate the speed climbing ability. After that, in the truest sense of the word, at super speed, he approached the girl to pick her up. All this time, the judge had a very cool and confident face. The guy in a split second snatched the girl from the men thereby dropping them on the floor and went to run away. The guy did not hide his joy from what he had just done and told the girl that they would immediately leave here. The guy easily jumped over the building, which looked more like a tower thus getting out of the city. The guy liked the fact that he could use his power even longer. The guy told the girl not to worry because soon they would be outside. And in a few seconds, the guy had already jumped over a huge wall around the city. The jump was so high that they stayed in the air for several tens of seconds. The guy landed on the ground in time, because he was just the same at the limit. He believes that they are already far away, and they will not be able to track them down. Having recovered, the girl immediately began to apologize to the guy, arguing that she gave him problems. But the guy at that time didn't really listen to her, but only thought about how dangerous it was. But Mason asked the girl not to speak like that. She did everything right. It's his fault that he didn't take care of everything before. He just wasted so much time in vain. But who could have known that they would act so quickly? It was the girl's fault. She was too weak. If only she could gain time. The girl still believed that she was to blame for everything. The guy asked if this supreme judge is strong, to which the girl replied that he must be evolved to the fifth degree. Well, since the guy was not particularly in the subject, he asked if the fifth degree is the most powerful force. It is very difficult to go to the next stage. It took her 10 years to reach the third degree. Each camp has a high degree evolved that is responsible for security, but a fifth degree evolved is rare. It is said that a tenth degree evolved is so strong that it can destroy an entire city with one blow. The guy did not think that there were people with such phenomenal power, but he thought that he could manage this world once he had a system. And at this time, the same judge was approaching his partners, whose intention was clearly not the best. She immediately warned the guy, but the judge was too fast and the guy did not have time to react after which the man struck him with a powerful blow from his knee right in the stomach. The man began to beat the guy almost half to death. His blows were not only strong but also accurate. He aimed the guy right in the face. And the girl at that time could not do anything. She just shouted out the guy's name. Defiantly holding the guy's bloodied head in front of him, the man angrily asked if he allowed them to walk. The guy lay covered in blood on the ground. The girl nevertheless decided to somehow help the guy and began to approach the judge. As expected, the judge managed to quickly react to this and hit the girl right in the stomach. A few seconds later, the man held the girl by the throat, and at that moment she begged him to let go. As it turned out, the guy was conscious and began to reach into his pocket for a potion. Then he drank it. Turning around, the room was clear that he was surprised at this action of the guy. Unimaginable things began to happen to the guy. He let go of the flask with the potion. The girl is a little believing that he has spent the potion at this moment. But the man just laughed at this, because he was sure that this would not help the guy in any way. After a few seconds, he started laughing even more. The guy's stomach twisted sharply. He writhed in incredibly indescribable pain from drinking the potion. 
The man said that he had never met people dumber than the guy. He asked her boyfriend, really thinks that he will evolve and be able to defeat him. Even if the guy manages to evolve, in the eyes of a man, he will just be a slightly stronger insect. According to the man, the guy will die so soon, which exhausts himself even more. Is it really better to take a mortal risk and try to defeat a man? A guy is like a miserable insect that is about to die, but still tries to fight for life. This is an interesting case as well. At the moment when the guy was writhing in pain, he began to remember his past, how he stood in front of some man who scolded him for always getting into fights. The man was already tired of repeating to the guy that you need to get along with classmates. But the guy said that if he is offended, he will always give back. He remembers how someone hit him right in the face. Most likely it was his dad, who was furious because he told him to stop fighting at school. He ordered his son to stop embarrassing him. The guy explained that he was teased for not having a mother. The man at this time simply remained silent as if he had not heard anything. He also recalled how once his boss told him that from tomorrow he might not come to work. But the guy could not understand what was the matter and what he had done wrong. But the director said that there is nothing strange in the fact that the boss invites an employee for a cup of coffee. He could not understand why the guy got into their business. It's better for the guy to learn how to do it. The guy also recalled how when he walked along a dark street with his things. At this time, he saw how some hooligans on the street molested his at that time not yet girlfriend Emma. The guy at that time approached them from behind and asked what they were doing here. One of the hooligans told the guy not to mind his own business, after which he pushed him away. A few minutes after the fight, the whole beaten and scratched guy was holding on to the hooligan's leg, and he at one time told him to let him go. They thought that he was like a rabid dog, and one of them offered to leave here, otherwise the police would come running. The last words of the hooligans were that the guy would no longer catch their eye. After that, the girl ran up to the guy and thanked him for helping her. She said that she would take him to the hospital. It seems that he had serious injuries, but he said that there was nothing to worry about. These were just scratches. In the end, the guy only said that Emma hurry home because this area is not safe. The girl ran up to him and stopped him. She noticed that he was with a suitcase, so he had nowhere to live. She also added that her family was just giving an apartment and invited him to come to them. The guy had already agreed to the proposal to the girl. After a few minutes, he was already sitting in the apartment at the table and ate all sorts of things. The girl was obviously glad that the guy came to her, and it was clear from the guy that he was happy. Meanwhile, the man switched from the girl to the guy and put his foot on his hand. The judge called the guy a half-dead dog. He believed that he apparently failed to evolve. But at this time, the guy was somewhere in an indescribable place and the monotonous voice of the system said that soon the guy would completely lose his mind because he was stuck in a loop and his endless memories. The chances of evolving with the help of a second level potion were too small. Apparently, everything was over for this candidate. His data was still not the most outstanding. Now it remains to find a new candidate. All their numerous attempts were unsuccessful. Perhaps they are simply destined to die. Then Emma asked the guy whether it was tasty for him, to which he answered, and that even with the culinary skills of a girl, you can open your own restaurant. A girl will always be happy to cook for a guy as soon as he says so. Those words made the boy a little embarrassed. The girl remembered that in the afternoon, she took a cake from a popular store nearby and stood at the table to bring it. She began to cut off a piece for him with the words that he should try it. He said that it was very tasty. The girl heard that their confectioner was the owner of an international award. And at this time, the guy remembered that Melanie told him that she wanted to become a confectioner but she believes that this is not very suitable for her. But the guy was sharply alert. Emma could not understand what happened to the guy because a second ago he was joyful, and now he seemed to have fallen into a stupor. The guy has the feeling that he forgot something and cannot remember it. And at this time, the judge grabbed the girl on his shoulder. She told him if he wants to kill, so let him kill now, but he is stalling for time. But he replied that he would kill her for me. They would scold him if there was not a single merchant of things left which pleased the head of the city. In addition, according to the man, the girl has a pretty face. You can cut off her limbs and give her head to have fun. Such words are clearly not something that surprised the girl, but she was simply at a loss. At this time, a man was grabbed by the leg by a guy who still managed to evolve. The guy was the liveliest of all. Very strong energy was expressed from him. The man clearly did not expect this. The guy ordered the man to stand. After that, he grabbed him by the coat, and with the help of him, he began to seem to rise to the man. In a fraction of a second, the guy delivered a powerful blow to the man right in the jaw. The impact was indescribably powerful, and on top of that, it's very accurate. 
The strength of the guy was so strong that the man literally punched the ground with his face. The girl was clearly glad that the guy did not die, so he was also able to save her. The man lay unconscious and covered in blood in fragments of stones. And the guy at that time with bloody fists was kneeling over the man and Melanie was calling the guy. The guy still managed to evolve as I said earlier. He wiped the blood from his face with his hand. With a joyful expression on her face, the girl said that she already thought that the guy was dead. But he just laughed at this and added that it was not so easy to kill him. But I rejoice. It did not last long. The lying man plunged his hand into the guy in the literal sense of the word, thereby breaking through him. The girl, you yourself, the guy obviously didn't expect this. It was clear from her look that she was very scared because of the guy. And she was not only alarmed, but frightened. After the man was able to get up, he hung the guy in front of him while continuing to keep his hand in his chest. Taunting the guy, he congratulated him on his successful evolution, and the man, in principle, as always, had a calm and confident look. Let the guy succeed, he is only at the first stage of evolution. He asked if the guy really thinks that this is enough to defeat him. The boy clenched his teeth in anger. It was possible to understand that the guy was preparing for something indescribably powerful. What just happened after a few seconds, the guy shone with a yellow glow. The man could not understand what had just happened to the guy. In his eyes, it was noticeable that for the first time he was really scared. The shining guy literally began to levitate in the air. The man was still at a loss from what he saw. The man could not believe it because it is impossible. This is the energy of the Golden Core. It is impossible. Only those who have evolved at the tenth step can do this. The man realized that things wouldn't go like that. And he definitely couldn't defeat the guy if he really evolved at the tenth step and was going to rush away from here with all his might what he just did in a split second. He really raced at full speed because he did not want to be killed at the hands of a guy whom he recently considered the simplest little man. The guy just evolved. The man could not understand how he managed to use the energy of the golden core, but this one no doubt looks just like that time. At this time, the guy was already completely covered with this yellow radiance and directed his hand directly in the direction of the moving man. After the guy pointed his finger in the direction of the man, it shone bright yellow and some kind of magic ball formed. But the man did not suspect anything at that moment, because he was only thinking about how to escape. Yellow sounded better than energy in the middle of the forest, he blurted out with him everything that he met on the way. It is clear that in a few seconds the beam reached the man himself. He literally began to disappear from the face of the earth. It was better to put a huge crater behind him. This battle will clearly go down in history, and at this time... The head felt something. He felt the energy of some familiar person five kilometers from here. Is it really someone strong heading to his city? At this time, and in the 17th camp, their boss also sensed something. In the climbing aid union, two girls also sensed this incredible power. And the guy at this time, exhausted, began to fall to the floor. A girl immediately ran up to him and told the guy to hold on. Also added that she would bandage his wounds. After a few seconds, it turned out that the guy was too big early, and the girl could not stop the bleeding. In a fraction of a second, the guy's body was covered like some kind of shield. It is clear that the girl was surprised by what she saw because the blood stopped abruptly. The girl raised the guy with a comma and said that he should hold on. Now she will take him to the doctor, after which they went, in fact, to the doctor. Meanwhile, the head rushed to the scene where he felt the energy. Well, when he arrived at the place, oddly enough, he did not see anything and the energy also disappeared abruptly. The head could not understand why such a strong evolved suddenly entered the battle near his city. He hopes he did not come to his soul. Although if you think about it, he is a simple entrepreneur, so he could not cross the path of evolved at the expense of the fourth stage and above. They went somewhere like a warehouse. The girl began to loudly knock on the door and scream for them to open it as soon as possible. She literally broke down the door with her feet, and thereby pushed the girl who was standing in front of the door. Oddly enough, the girl fell and thrashed. She was clearly not happy with what the girl had done. The girl said that Melanie would pay for the new door herself, but the girl did not have time to chat, and she said that the girl should help her cure the guy as soon as possible. It was clear from Melanie that she was very worried. It was very strange. Melanie asked the girl what was wrong with the guy. She answered something that her vital signs were very strange. She couldn't say that everything was bad, but she couldn't tell you back either. In any case, first you need to properly bandage his wounds. An x-ray showed that in places of storage, his organs were covered with some kind of golden film. We can say that this metal saved his life. Miracles, the girl had never seen such a method of treating wounds. The girl asked if the guy was okay. 
to which she was told that the doctor could not say for sure after all, it is very strange. Let the guy stay here for a couple of days, she will watch him. At this time, somewhere in the lane, three men stood and listened from some fourth man so that they hit him a couple of times. As it turned out, it was their boss. They could not understand what he was talking about, because after all, after all, he was their boss. As it turned out, it was Logan. He asked his subordinates if they really didn't want to hit him once, because they always get it from him. He said not to be afraid, he would not remind them of this, they could easily beat him. After which he briefly thought, three subordinates began to literally beat their boss almost to a pulp. Logan was clearly unhappy with this, because they did not even hesitate for a minute, although he promised them not to remember this, but he had something completely different in his plans. At this time, the guy knocked on the door. As it turned out, Logan was knocking on the door to the same doctor. Now it is clear why he asked to be beaten. He came to the doctor and said that he had hurt himself again and asked her to cure him as soon as possible. The girl was surprised because this is the third time in a month, something the guy began to get injured too often, to which he replied that there was no other way in their profession. Heard some sounds outside, Melanie went out to see who had come. She instantly remembered how Logan presented a gun to Mason's head and at that time told the girl how much she had killed his brothers. Logan promised that the next time they met, he would cut her to pieces and feed her to the zombies to avenge his brothers. The girl could not understand what he was doing here because the 17th camp should have its own infirmary. If Logan knew they were here, he would definitely call his men and surround her. He had to get away before he let the camp know about them. When Logan practically entered the room with the girl and the guy, the doctor stopped him and said that there was already a patient in this room and told him to find her and she would treat him early. Entering Mason's room, the doctor was very surprised by what the girl was doing. She said that the guy should not move now and ordered her to quickly put him back. But the girl did not listen to her and said that they needed to leave here. Melanie heard someone open the door to the ward. Oddly enough, it was Logan himself who looked ominously at the girl. He immediately took out his and was ready to shoot. He pointed the gun at the girl and the guy. At this time, the doctor attacked him with words about what he was doing and Melanie grabbed the guy on his back and began to run away. Taxon told the doctor that these two had killed a dozen of his boys. He promised them that he would kill them. Logan also said that he had already notified the camp. They were nearby. They definitely would not leave. He also added that he would skin them. But the doctor interrupted him and said that there would be no murders in her infirmary because he was her patient. If a guy even touches them with a finger, he can be, and she has the treatment. The girl was serious. She would not allow anyone to touch her patients. Lowering his head, the guy said that he would not touch her patients, but also asked if it was okay to touch non-patients. The evil guy said that they can stay here for a couple of days. He tells his people to surround the building. He promises them as soon as they leave the infirmary, and there will be no more dead. At this time, the guy's mind was transferred somewhere into the system. He was congratulated on the successful transition to the first stage of evolution. He was surprised because he believed that he had died. The system reported that he had spent three years of his life to concentrate power and defeat the evolutionary fifth degree. It is clear that the guy could not understand what three years of life the system was talking about. The system reported that during the loss of consciousness, the guy relied on his gift of concentration and was able to defeat the enemy. But even during these years of his life, who would have thought that one could evolve with the help of one's own willpower and not underestimated him? The guy could not understand who says this all the time. The guy asked me to answer his question, who they are and why they gave him this system. They hoped that the guy would be able to go to the end. When he reached the finish line, they would definitely meet. The doctor was surprised because in just one day, all his wounds healed, even taking into account the ability of the evolved generation. She had not yet observed such a quick recovery, but the little one could not understand why then the guy would not wake up in any way. But the girl believed that he would wake up very soon. He probably needed a little stimulation. After that, in the truest sense of the word, she charged him in the balls. So the expected guy was instantly, firstly, writhing in pain. And secondly, he woke up. The girl laughed at this and apparently the guy is already much better. He looks full of energy. Defiantly coughing, the girl told the guy to get dressed. While the guy was dressing, the girl reported what happened while he was out with Logan. The 17th camp had already surrounded this building. The girl began to tell that in the old days, she could easily deal with their boss, who is at the third stage of evolution, but that supreme judge kicked her, damaging her internal organs, so yesterday she could not take risks. Hearing this, the guy became furious and said that he would deal with them now. 
The girl said that she was going with a guy, but he objected to this, arguing that she needed to heal her wounds. Now he can deal with this bunch of losers in one fell swoop, because he is completely healed and cheerful. At this time, the boss was asked why they couldn't just break in there and finish off these two, to which he replied that it was impossible because he made a promise to the doctor, so they dare not break it. One of the subordinates informed the boss that at the resource point, they said that today the doctor would go to them to buy medicine. They could wait a moment, get inside and finish them off, and then just say that they left the infirmary themselves. Then the doctor would not say anything to Logan. It was clear that the guy liked this plan, he just planned to do just that. They decided to kill the guy, take the girl alive. One of the subordinates asked the boss whether he didn't go after the doctor, or he decided to have fun with another girl, which made the guy just laugh and said that the most important thing was that the doctor didn't find out about anything. A few seconds later, a crowd of people saw the silhouette of a man in front of them. The guy was surprised at who was standing in front of them. Oddly enough, it was Mason himself who came in with the words that you should not waste your energy on walking because he himself came to them. Logan immediately ordered his boyfriend to kill Mason. The guy again shone with some kind of yellow glow. The guy was determined. He wanted to end them once and for all. The digital pad is activated. A crowd of people head towards the guy, hoping that they can easily finish him off. In principle, this whole crowd of people consisted of evolved initial first degree. Some of them had speed six and strength was four. Someone had speed three and strength was six. Someone had speed five and strength was six. But Logan was an evolved initial third degree, which had a speed of as much as 11 and a strength of as much as 50. At the moment, the guy who evolved completely the first degree, which has a speed of 7 and a strength of 20, he activated the ability of high-speed climbing, which increased the probability of winning to 90%. In a fraction of a second, the guy began to torment opponents with indescribable speed. It's clear that he forgot me about Logan. In just a few seconds, this whole crowd of people lay on the floor, immobilized and most likely dead. He only left Logan alive, but even he couldn't figure out how that was even possible. After all, the last time he seemed to him an ordinary person of the lowest rank, he could not understand how the guy could become so strong in such a short time. Mason said that if he also used a weapon, they would all be dead already. But considering that yesterday he still didn't touch them, the guy will give them one more chance to survive. He set conditions for Logan under which he would let them go only if the boss gets on his knees and starts barking like a dog and then calls him the owner. The merchant Alex rejoiced at what he managed to find and asked Mason to look if there was something worthwhile. The guy immediately replied that this was exactly what he needed and gave him canned food in return. The last word of the guy was that the merchant continued to collect gold and so that he would not worry about canned food, he would not deprive him. It is clear that in this world, gold is worth nothing it was because of this that the merchant could not understand what the guy would do with this gold. The cause had long become a new currency, and that guy had 20 ingots. It was very rich. The guy told Melanie that he would go get the goods. He would also bring food and water. She only told him to be careful on the road. After Little did not leave, he began to move in due time. He was transferred to his bed. Just at that time, someone intensively knocked into the room. The guy immediately got out of bed and went to the door to find out who was knocking there. Turns out it was Emma. She immediately threw herself into the guy's arms, and the guy was pleasantly surprised by this. The girl asked the guy what was wrong with him, where he was all this time. She could not get through to him. He immediately began to come up with some excuses. He told her that he had gone somewhere on business, and there the connection did not catch, and asked her forgiveness. It's clear that the girl got a little angry because of this, because the guy had to warn her about the entrance, because he scared her to death. She was already going to the police, asked him never to do that again, and be sure to tell her if she suddenly gets together, go somewhere. Slightly embarrassed, the guy did not say that he would take this into account. The guy said that as an apology, he presents her with a gift. But Emma said that she did not need any gift, because the guy is already a mile away, why would he need extra spending? But the guy asked the girl not to worry, but his finances, because he just earned a lot on the trip, he said that he would buy her everything she wanted and everything she liked. They came to some very stunning building, which by all appearances showed that it was for the rich. The guy noticed that this place is quite sophisticated, but the girl, on the contrary, told the guy that this is a rather expensive boutique and asked him to look for another place. But the guy told the girl to choose something to her taste and so that she was sure that he could afford at least 100 of these to buy. 
In the future, he would earn even more. The girl could not understand how he only managed to earn. The guy turned to the assistant and asked her to show the best jewelry they have, and she asked us to wait for him for just a second. Then she brought an exquisite jewelry, which the guy immediately hung around the girl's neck. The girl had a very strange reaction. She kissed the guy on the lips as a token of gratitude. It is clear that both were embarrassed by this. She said that she really liked it, and most importantly, that this was his gift. The guy told the assistant that they were taking it and asked him to pack it. The guy asked the girl to wait for him here. He goes to take something to the bank. He promised to return soon. Right after that, he went to the bank. Approaching the assistant, he asked if the bank accepts gold. The girl asked how many bars the guy would like to exchange. Then he opened his backpack, from which a mountain of gold literally shone. After the director himself found out who came to their bank, he hurried to see this person. At this time, the guy was sitting on the couch when the man ran in. He immediately began to apologize for the long wait, but the guy said that there were no problems in this. The director asked my catfish if he could take a look at his gold bars, to which he replied that they were in a backpack and he could take a look. After that, the director had exactly the same reaction as the bank staff. The guy said that the director himself can check the samples. There are 12 ingots. He asked how much he could roughly get for them. A few minutes later, the guy was already signing papers on the exchange of ingots. Even the assistant asked the director how much money the guy got for so many ingots. In total, he had 12 bars. The percentage of gold in each was 99%, which amounted to $6,600,000. Returning to the jewelry store, the guy was slightly surprised at what he saw in front of him. He saw how Emma and some stranger quarreled over something incomprehensible. As it turned out, they argued over the necklace, ordered the girl to take it off, but the girl argued that she took this necklace by the fact that Emma had not yet paid. If she had not paid, then it was not her. After the guy asked what happened here, Emma replied that this girl took her necklace. It was clear from the girl that she was very angry with the stranger. The girl handed the money to the seller and said what kind of necklace it was, and even said that she did not need change. But the guy interrupted the girl's conversation and said that he would pay in gold. After he took out this ingot of gold, it was clear to all those present that they were very surprised at this. He said that this piece is enough to make ten more such necklaces. But the girl did not want to accept the fact that she would now lose the common necklace and began to invent that anyone could see that it was a fake, and for some time repeated that she had paid the first time I ate it. The seller apologized to the girl and said that this necklace already has a reservation. Even if she paid first, this does not give her the right to appropriate it for herself. A few seconds later, the saleswoman packed the necklace and gave it to Emma, and the girl at that time was furious. The stranger promised that the guy and the girl would still pay for it. Sorry, I have no idea how to sign this. Emma suggested that the guy first go to the market for groceries, and then go home, to which he politely agreed. The guy was interrupted by a can that flew right into his head. In front of him stood five of some hooligans. Apparently their leader spat at that moment. As it turned out, the same girl who was arguing with Emma was standing next to him, the man threatened the couple and asked how they even dared to take the necklace from his woman. Then, as expected, they began to beat them. It is clear that Mason immediately stood in front of the girl. His look showed that he was not scared at all and, in principle, could easily cope with them. And the girl at that time was very frightened and offered the guy just to run away from here. After a few seconds, the girl opened her eyes to see what was happening. But she no longer saw the crowd of a bully in front of her. And the guy said that they needed to go to the market as if nothing had happened. After the girl asked what happened to the hooligans, the guy, joking a little at them, said that they might have had an epileptic attack. A few minutes later, the girl and the guy were already in the market. The saleswoman said that they had five and a half dollars. At this time, a man approached the girl from behind. She was very surprised to see him. As it turned out, it was her uncle. She could not understand how her uncle knew that she was with her, but about the fact that he installed a surveillance application on her phone. But he reminded the girl of what she promised her father also rudely adding that they were going home. But the guy stood up for the girl and said that she did not want to go with him, so he only had to go alone. But the man is already tired of repeating the guy, such as he is completely uneven. There's to Emma. Her father is already looking for a suitable groom who will meet her needs, and when she goes, they will immediately play a wedding. The man asked the girl if she remembers her father's words about what he would do if she did not obey him. If she obeys her father, then this guy will be cut off his limbs and thrown into the river. After these words, it was clear from the girl that she was frightened and a little nervous. I realized all the scenarios in my head. The girl decided that she would still go with a man, 
because it would be at least better for Mason himself. Following the departing relatives, the guy shouted for them to stop. He asked if they would let Emma go with him if he said he got a lot richer. The man asked if the guy really wants to say that he has more than six million in his account. Apparently, this was the very condition under which they would allow to somehow approach the guy to the girl. The man asked the guy to come down from heaven to earth. Let him first try to earn 600 million in a year, then they will talk. Such words clearly chic the guy. 600 M million, the guy could see that he was slightly furious after such words. The guy agreed with the conditions of the man. He was very unhappy with this whole situation, and it was clear from his eyes that he really was determined about the girl. The guy asked the girl to wait for him. He will definitely earn these 600 million and take her away. The action moved to the base. So the time the two men were discussing something, one of them asked if they could find something, to which he replied that it was at the unification of the buildings of the mainland, where the main characters just visited. They want a thousand zombie cores for him. And the man was furious with such an amount because all his property costs exactly the same amount. A bunch of charlatans just want to rip him to the skin. They conveyed that there will always be a buyer for this product, so it's up to the man. After which he began to think. Their cost directly goes beyond all limits. But if he buys this thing and gives it to him, then he will certainly agree to cooperate. The main thing is to get his help. They're not only a thousand cores, but the entire base will be men. The man ordered to go and bring him this thing because he needs it too much. The joyful guy was holding some bags and a bunch of bags in his hands and announced that he had returned. Melanie was surprised because there are many times more here than he brought last time. Rice flour, meat, eggs, milk are all there, the guy said. But the girl could not understand only one thing, why the guy brought so much flour this time. The guy argued that the girl could bake. He remembers that she said that she would like to become a confectioner. From such an action on the girl, it was clear that she was embarrassed. But the girl could not understand what the guy was talking about, because her main task was to protect him and how he would have time for baking. But the girls haven't lit it yet. The guy thinks she doesn't need to accompany him next time. It's better that she stays at the base and will rest. Sister Melanie BK told the guy that then she could go with him. He was glad about this, because help would not hurt him at all. But Little objected to this. Melanie asked what the girl was up to again. She was not going to quietly finish off the guy on the way. But Baker said that her little sister could do something so insidious. She's kind of embarrassed that she's sitting on their neck. So she'll go with the guy and protect him with all her might. The girls have nothing to worry about. The action moved to the base. The guy could not understand why the entrance to the base is so narrow. The girl began to explain to him in order to make it more impregnable, so the base is protected from zombies and people. But the base was still huge and seemingly powerful. Two men were carrying some kind of box as they were carrying it. It was clear that something valuable was lying there. After a fraction of a second, they lowered the case. The man asked if the treasure was inside. He ordered them to give him a look as soon as possible. It was clear from his eyes that something really valuable lay there. The man opened the box. There lay some kind of stone staff, which did not really look like some kind of treasure. Even the man himself did not believe that this was exactly it, because it looked like an ordinary stone staff. He asked if they could not slip a fake. When the man almost touched this staff, he was abruptly stopped. As it turned out, the cadaveric poison on the staff, even the evolved ones, the risk of infection from touching it is not ruled out. The evolved fifth degree will be able to hold the staff in his hands for only 15 minutes. The man was surprised that this staff has such a concentration of poison. It is not surprising that he needs this staff so much. The man asked, or a subordinate was checking if this staff was real. He reported that non-evolved people without any injuries or diseases were taken for the experiment. They all became zombies immediately after one touch. The man thanked the subordinate for the excellent work. He is always calm when he gets down to business. At this time, the dialogue was interrupted by a guy who entered the room and turned to the commander. He said that two merchants had arrived. They wanted to exchange goods. They have a huge backpack full of canned food. At first glance, they are rich people. After such words, it was clear from the man that he was surprised. The man was very happy about this because he had just run out of food. And here the delicacy was brought right to his door. He wanted to look at this meat with pleasure. At this time, Baker said that, to tell the truth, she and her sister did not particularly cooperate with this base. So first you need to test the ground. Well, the guy said that he needed to get rich as soon as possible. The girl seemed to say that here you can meet a maximum of evolved third degree. He told the girl not to worry. He promises if they get out of here safe. Just the same. When the guy finished talking, the commander burst into the room. 
he had a very joyful and high spirits. He immediately apologized for such a long wait. The man said that he had heard that they had brought a very good item for exchange and asked to take a look at it. The guy showed backpacks fully stuffed with canned food. The man was very surprised at this because such a jar costs a lot, and here probably there are more than a hundred of them. The man immediately gave some kind of sign to his subordinate, after which he nodded to him. The man asked what they wanted in return. The girl replied that they needed cores, as well as gold or other jewellery. But at that moment, the door to the room slammed shut. It is clear that such an action confused the sellers present. With a malicious smile on his face, the man said that it was nothing. They didn't just want to calmly discuss the price. Oddly enough, the man after a few seconds ordered to fix it for us to take them. The girl immediately began to run away, but she was surprised that the guy stood like a stone and was not at all going to move somewhere. The guy sighed and asked why in this world all people are the same. He just wants to quietly make a deal with them. And here is the time the two fighters almost crept up to the guy. The guy for some time already shone with a yellow glow. It is clear that such actions very much embarrassed the men. The guy activated the ability of high-speed climbing. The use of abilities makes his fingers much stronger, which allows him to stick them into a hard surface like a stone. At the same time, the strength in the legs increases, increasing the skill of jumping, and therefore a person can move much faster. Finally, the overall accuracy of the movement of all limbs is increased, due to which a person is able to deliver accurate and high-speed strikes. What the guy was doing just like that, he kicked the ass of his opponents. Thus, the ability allows you to defeat an opponent in a very short time. There was only one man left in front of the guy, and all his remaining subordinates were lying on the floor after the battle with the guy. The sister was very surprised by this, because she did not expect that the guy was incredibly strong. The man immediately began to make excuses and says that this is just a misunderstanding and that they misunderstood everything. From the room came the most severe cries of pain. The man with all his might begged the guy not to beat him. He even agreed that he was wrong. The guy asked if it was really necessary to force him, you know, the guy himself does not like violence. The man promised that he would give them what they wanted in return and would not offend them with the goods. The girl was furious because the man wanted to kill them and take the goods for himself. He really thinks that they will cooperate with a dirty merchant like him. But the guy with the hand upset the girl after he said that they would be happy to cooperate with him. It is clear that the girl could not understand the guy's decision. How can you even believe a man? Someday he will definitely plunge a knife into their backs. The guy already understood that trade is also involved in the post-apocalyptic world. You can stumble upon predatory people, but if you let them know what awaits them, if you use dirty tricks, then trade will become much more pleasant and fruitful. The man said that it was not too late for them to show respect to such a strong man as a guy. Moreover, they would not even dare to think about dirty tricks. The man told the girl and the guy to follow him. He will show the goods they need. After that, he brought them to the room where the same box lay and showed his hand to him and said that this was exactly the product. But the guy thought that it was just a broken stick and said that he did not need this. The man began to tell that even though the guy did not know, but in truth, he sold almost all of his property to buy this staff, which is why, out of desperation, he wanted to take away their goods. A hard life began for them. And this is far from a broken stick. It is a very rare and valuable weapon, but it increases your damage, they say with this staff. You can even defeat someone who is above you on an evolutionary level. If the guy does not believe, he can try it himself. It is clear that the guy was surprised by such information. He did not expect that this stick, according to him, is so cool. It is clear that the man provoked all this, and now the guy should hold after some five seconds in his hands as the Tomain will turn him into a zombie. According to the man, the guy has come to an end. The guy abruptly changed his mind and said that the man should try better. The man began to make excuses that after all, weapons are such a thing. It's better to try it yourself. But the guy does not want to. It is better for a man to try. He will see how strong this staff is. The room could be seen that he was very nervous. He even began to stutter. But the guy in a rough voice said that he still tried the staff. Taking the staff in his hand, but first wrapping it in a rag, he handed it to the man. The room could be seen that he was very much frightened. The guy repeated once again that the man took the staff in his hands. Then the actual staff fell to the floor. The man almost got a heart attack from this. The guy asked if the man really thought he hadn't figured out what the catch was. The guy was waiting for him another chance for cooperation, but he did not appreciate it. He said that the man himself made his choice. At this time, the girl told the guy that he needed to kill the man. What he just did begin to do after a few seconds, 
He grabbed him with his most powerful fist and began to choke him. The man writhed from the incredible pain he was experiencing, and at this time he begged not to kill him. The hanging body of a girl in front of him, who just stole a little medicine. From such memories, the guy's anger stopped even more, respectively, and the force with which he strangled the man also became greater. He remembered the words of the judge, which he asked, or is it really nice to feel that someone's life is in your hands? After that, the guy immediately jumped, and he immediately released the man. After that, the guy just started to leave and told the girl to take their things. And because they were leaving, the girl and she were perplexed by what she saw, because she hoped that the guy was about to kill the man for what he did to them. The girl could not understand or they would really just leave. A minute ago, the man wanted to kill them. Why shouldn't they do the same? But the girl believed that she understood the guy. She thought that he did not want to watch the man die painfully. Then you can use poison or cut off his head with one blow of a knife. There are many more ways to make him suffer for a short time. But the guy asked the girl to stop. The guy decided that he would probably take the staff, come down for compensation. For a while, the girl thought about the fact that the guy is just hard work. He has such abilities, and he poses himself as a miserable mother, Teresa. Such a person is definitely not able to protect his sister, according to the girl. Following the departing couple, the man asked them to stop. Very unexpectedly, but for some reason, the man asked the guy to help their base. The girl became even more furious at this. She asked if they, in the opinion of the man, were some kind of charitable organization. But the man begged them to agree. If they agree, then when everything is over, he will give them all the valuable things that he has at the base. He argued his appeal by the fact that they are in complete despair. If no one helps them, then the base will soon come to an end. The girl asked if this was dirty tricks again. Apparently the man was tired of living straight. But the man began to tell that they sent a huge amount of things to the fifth degree evolved to help him. But he still asked for even more. Now they are simply forced to go on robberies. The man asked to follow him. When they see it themselves, they will understand everything. He asked them to look at the hole below. He asked if the corpses see you. To be honest, it's hard not to see them even from afar. The man explained that these were people who were killed in just one day. It is clear that the guy could not understand why there were so many corpses and who did it at all. Every day, several dozen people die at their base, and this is not the work of outsiders. As it turned out, the head of their base was to blame. In order to prevent infection every day, they burn corpses. Approaching their base, anyone will smell this nauseating smell of burning meat. The girl could not understand if their head had really gone crazy, if he continued to kill so many people every day. Very soon there would be no one left at their base at all. The man said that the girl was right, which is why he decided to overthrow the head and lock him in prison. The guy asked if this was the reason why he sold everything to get the help of the evolving fifth stage, to which the man replied that the guy was right. But one such evolving one will not be enough. You need at least three strong fighters because their leader evolved seventh degree. At this time, the man remembered what kind of head with one movement and two fingers literally hit the head of some man, and of course, he died from this. At the same time, a stranger ran by. In a fraction of a second, the stranger was already lying on the floor, bloodied and oddly enough killed, and the head kept repeating that they must all die. At this time, some big guy and a slightly less tall guy with glasses stood and looked at the man with some kind of condemning look. The man approached them and was delighted because he had finally found them. The big man began to slightly rudely inform the man that even if they agreed to help him, but let him not forget about their conditions, they will only take effect if at least evolved fifth degrees gather. Well, what is there a man does not feel that among all those present there was that same third fighter? The man asked if the commander was trying to trick them. The man began to explain everything. Among them there is no evolving fifth degree, but he found someone who knows how to increase his degree. It is clear that the man could not understand what the commander was talking about. The man immediately asked the subordinate if it was him. He felt that he had the fourth degree. He asked him how he could improve it and defeat him. But the subordinate said that the man was mistaken. It was not him at all. A few seconds later, Mason appeared behind the man. The commander introduced him and said that this is the one he was talking about, also adding that the guy has outstanding strength. The man was a little surprised with the guy. The man said that the guy apparently evolved the first degree. He asked if the guy could increase the degree to defeat the evolved fifth degree. The guy said that this would not give him any difficulty because he had already won once. After these words, the man began to laugh out loud almost to the entire base, also adding that the guy was definitely mistaken. The man also told the commander that the guy was deceiving him. 
The man began to tell that there is no one in the world who would be able to step over three degrees at once. And the guy says that he can step over four, but it just sounds ridiculous. The guy said that the man was right, because the last time he was very lucky, that's why he was able to defeat the evolving and the fifth degree. So he himself does not know how much his strength can increase, which is why he decided to wait for them. He offered to fight and compare their powers. The guy also added that if he loses this battle, then he leaves, and also gives them to her with canned food as compensation. Anti-toxic gloves made of a special material protect the skin from the penetration of poison. The man began to disassemble them, arguing that so that forces would not be resorted to, and there was no need to check who is stronger. The man said that if the guy proves that he can rise to four degrees, then he leaves to defeat the evolving seventh degree. They need to understand the situation well. He is not going to charge his life into the hands of anyone. The guy agreed with the commander. It's just sparring. No one should get hurt. The man asked the guy to calm down, also adding that he was not going to kill anyone. A man and a guy were standing in the middle of the square preparing to spar. At this time, someone there waved a red flag, which meant the beginning of sparring. The man immediately began to attack, but the guy managed to react and fought off the blow with the staff. The guy was clearly lucky that he had this staff in sparring with such a strong opponent. From the impact of the man on the staff, the vibration went away. Even the guy himself was surprised how much power in one blow. His hands were trembling. He also noticed that the man is too fast. From the very beginning of the battle, he has to act at the limit of his capabilities. The man was surprised that the guy was able to dodge all of his blows and yet agreed that the guy still knows how to do something. But the man believed that the guy did not have enough strength to jump over as many as four degrees. The guy was very surprised after the man broke through the stone with one blow. All five degree evolved are so fierce. The guy began to run away. It's clear that the man couldn't understand where he ran. What's the point of always dodging? But the guy said that he would refuse otherwise to go straight to heaven. He just had to run. Well, the guy was still able to catch up with the man. The guy had the perfect plan, in his opinion, he was going to pierce the chest of a man with this staff. After that, the guy stopped abruptly and struck the man right below the groin, so the blow was so strong that it is difficult to describe in words. Very strange, but the expression on the man's face did not change at all. The guy believed that the man could not say a word from the pain. He said that this was his signature blow and the abortion technique. The guy still hasn't just removed it from the man's penis. The commander noticed that the guy hit the bullseye, after which he jokingly asked the guy standing next to him or his friend managed to get a wife. But the guy said that it was nothing to worry about. His special ability to make the body harden, he could handle such a minor attack quite well. But the man informed her that she was a staff and asked if his friend would be able to resist its effect. At this time, the man shone in a blue radiance, and then he threw the guy a few meters away from himself, so much so that the staff flew out of his hands. The guy, to put it mildly, rolled on the ground. After that, without a break, the man began to attack the guy, and he dealt a powerful blow to almost a guy in the head. The blow was so strong that a stone lying next to him cracked. After that, the man stood over the guy and said that the guy had lost. The man said that the guy is really strong, only at the first stage, but already has such high speed and accuracy, he thinks the guy would have no problem coping with the evolved third degree or the weaklings of the fourth degree. But in battle, he relies only on his strength without any strategy. He had better go home and train properly. He said that they were leaving. The commander asked if they would return, but the man told the commander not to worry. They wouldn't work out everything he paid them. When the commander finds a worthy evolving fifth degree, they won't come again. This guy is not strong enough. He has no chance against their crazy head. They will immediately kill him. At this time, some zombie reported that it was true. Coming out of the shadows, he said that this guy was no good. He also added that he would be much better suited for this role, but the guy was only surprised that his staff and gloves were in the hands of a stranger. The stranger apologized for stealing, but he also said that the guy had misused the staff. But the guy was most embarrassed by the fact that zombies can talk. Of course, such words do not get acquainted with the mother. He said that he was a man. The guy immediately apologized, but the stranger got out so suddenly that it seemed to him that it was a corpse. And the commander, on the contrary, was delighted with the stranger. He asked if he had finally agreed to help them. But then he said that he had come not for their sake. For the sake of the staff, he had been looking for it for so long, so they finally met. But the guy was indignant and said that the commander gave this staff to him. The stranger asked the commander if this guy is really telling the truth. The commander said that this staff was originally intended for a man, 
He gave a lot to get it. He only asked to help them, and he would give him the staff as a gift. The man laughed at this. He defiantly covered his mouth with his hand and laughed. I asked the guy not to be angry for help because I had a choice. He offered to stay with them. Then, when everything is over, he gives them weapons even cooler. The guy told the man that he agreed to help them, but he had one condition. When it's all over, they will only exchange things with him. He will become their sole supplier. It is clear that the man was a little surprised by such a condition. He asked the guy if he had enough products because they mainly take medicines and food, to which he replied that his sources allow, besides his prices are quite low, he just need gold or other valuables. The man said that he agreed to the terms of the guy. The guy with glasses asked his brother how he felt after such a powerful blow, but that he replied that everything was fine, he would just fix it a bit. All those present gathered in a small room and discussed something. The man thanked them for their desire to help, and now he wants to tell them the plan in detail. For comfortable communication in the future, the man asks them to briefly introduce themselves and tell about themselves. The big man introduced himself. As it turns out, his name is James. He evolved the fifth degree of the final stage. His special ability to harden the body, ordinary bullets can pass through him. The guy with the glasses was called Robertson. He evolved the fifth degree of the initial stage, the special ability to freeze everything that he touches with one touch. The man's name, which looks like zombie ears, was called Oscar. He did not reveal a special ability that evolved to the fifth degree, but only said that others could guess. Mason introduced himself that he evolved the first stage of the initial stage of the special ability of concentration, and the girl introduced herself as Becca. She evolved the second stage of the final stage. The special ability could be able to calculate like a supercomputer, after which the girl was surprised at why each of them appeared with them signs like profiles on a dating site. But the guy did not answer that he had no idea what it was better not to ask at all. After everyone finally introduced themselves, the men began to tell their plan. The head of their base evolved the seventh degree in the final stage. The special ability of his body becomes liquid. This is a big problem for them. It will be difficult to catch him, but a careless movement and he will kill them. According to his plan, you first need to take him to a secret room. Then Oscar poison him to paralyze his nervous system and their fighters will capture him. And Robertson will wait for the right moments to freeze him. And with the help of a mechanism, they will not lock him in a capsular cage. James said that the plan was really good and asked when they would begin to act. But Oscar at that time just laughed because now everyone knows about his special ability. The commander said that people should not be allowed to continue to die. Tomorrow, they will already carry out a clan to capture. The commander went down somewhere in the basement. Right next to him was the same head of the base. It is clear that even though the man had a plan, it still inspired some fear in him. The head of the mysterious asked if the commander was really going to kill him and end all these deaths. At this time, the head of the practically commander with a very strong jet of water, but at this time James covers him, who did not care because he knows how to harden. James stood in front of the commander and ordered him to step back a comma and was ready to cling to a fight with the head. From the look of the head, it was clear that he did not understand what would happen, but he was also ready for anything and for everyone who might come now. And at this time, as planned according to the plan, Oscar flew with a staff on the head and was about ready to poison him with a staff. But it was not there. While Oscar was trying to hit the head, he calculated everything and practically hit him with a jet of water. But Mason noticed it in time and picked up Oscar. The man laughed and was glad that my son was sleeping. He said that if it weren't for the guy, he would already be finished and at that time stroked his cheek with his hands. Well, James didn't have time for any jokes. He was serious about winning. Well, as it turned out in the struggle, somehow not in his own image, the head was able to inflict scratches, yes, small ones. But still, these are scratches on a person who has the ability to freeze. In a fraction of a second, he completely hit him right in the ribs. It is clear that the man was surprised at this. I could not understand how the head could pierce his hard body. But the man said that a liquid with high pressure and a high rotation speed is able to break through something very solid. Meanwhile, Robertson came running to help his brother. He began to freeze water. This, after all, but still helped. The head even took a step back. It was obvious that he was unhappy with all this. And it was also evident from the guy that he was a little in thought too. He should do now. But again, once again, Mason manages to take away from the head of his ally in time. And at this time, while the head was focused on how Mason was taken away by an ally, the day before James was ready to deliver a final powerful blow to him, 
what he just did and did in a split second. The man shouted to the whole room that he had broken the shape of the head, and this meant that now the exit of Roberts, which should freeze him. In principle, Robertson began to carry out his task in a few seconds. Well, something apparently did not go according to plan, and this collection of water turned into some kind of hurricane, and it was because of this that Roberts was thrown back. After my son asked or the head died, he was told that he dissipated so that the guy could not freeze him. The commander ordered to guard all the openings at the entrances and exits. He must not be allowed to leave. And the head at that time began to take on the image of a man. Well, now the image of a person was slightly strange, because the water was not blue as we are all used to seeing it, but a dark black dot. Even Roberts, he couldn't understand what the head was trying to do. And the commander said that things were bad. The point was that he was going to use the same technique. After that, the commander ordered everyone to get their shields and stand behind the screen with scores. And the head apparently has already begun to use some kind of technique. After two seconds, he began to thrust a stream of water into everyone's chest before punching this one. He even managed to stab the commander. The head even tried to pierce James, but to no avail. James told everyone to stand behind him as it turned out. The head increased the number of water jets, so their strength became less. Now his body can handle it. And the head apparently did not intend to stop. The commander yelled out that he is still still and let everyone attack now. After this technique, he becomes weaker for a while. Within 10 seconds, the water will again be in the state. It was in at the very beginning. He punished Oscar and frees him as soon as possible, after which you asked Mason to push him. They were already practically in this water balloon, so to speak. Well, the man at that time did not see anything, did not hear anything. Well, the man at that time did not see anything, did not hear anything. The guy has to have time to completely freeze it in these 10 seconds, which can be punished by someone with an incredibly difficult action. The man still did not feel anything, but it was already clear that ice stones were floating around his face, so to speak. It felt like the guy was about to finish. Mason shouted that everything worked out. Well, apparently Robertson himself did not think so. It was clear from his look that he was nervous, although this dome of water was really already covered in ice. Robertson reported that things were bad, the man accelerated the circulation of water, so the freezing slowed down. 